Are we live, bro? <laughs> I can't hear you, homie. I can't hear you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm muted. Maybe I got you muted or something. Oh, you know what? I think. No, it's up. My volume is up here. Everything is good on my end. Everything is good on my end, yeah. Can't hear you. Let me see. Let me see. Let me step out, step back in. Bismillah. How about this? Can y'all hear me now, everybody? Can y'all hear me now? Everyone in the comments, tell me if you can hear me. Can you hear me or no? Tadic, Thotic, you can hear me. Okay, all right. Um, perfect. Uh, yes, I know what the problem is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know what the problem is. Nadir was right. Nadir was right. Okay, well, um, All right, we got some good stuff today. Uh, we have, we're going to be going and talking about what everyone's talking about. It might be over talked, but we're going to talk about our new brother in Islam, mashallah, Abu Tait, Abu Bugatti. Inshallah, we're also going to cover what's going on in Dearborn, Michigan, and as well as other events in the Muslim Ummah. I put the StreamYard link up on different places, so I am going to also put it for you guys. So if you want to come up, anybody, and you've got some stuff to talk about, uh, that's concerning the Muslim Ummah, we, uh, we welcome it. Today is In the Saddle with your host, the Muslim Cowboy, and it is a laid-back show. Originally, we were going to go live with Brother Wissam and Mahdi, but unfortunately for some unforeseen um, circumstances, we are going to have to push it back to next week. But do stay tuned for that because we are going to have one of the best podcasts, one of the best informative you know, talks, muhadras, whatever you want to call it, lecture, but it's not going to be boring like a lecture, that will help you learn exactly why the Qur'an is authentic and authoritative. It's going to blow your socks away. MashaAllah, Brother Wissam has put together um, some uh, information and evidences from years of study um, and a lot of research that he's been doing to prove, to prove conclusively why the Qur'an truly is from God and why it must be followed, right? And why it is what we say it is as Muslims and how you can use the things that you're going to learn from his podcast with me to use in your da'wah, to use when you're explaining to non-Muslims why the Qur'an is the word of God. So uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to bring up Brother Nadir. Assalamu alaikum, bro. Can you hear me now? Wa alaikum as wa Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so, that it was wasn't you, brother. It wasn't you. You know what the problem was. Do you want to know what it was? Okay. It's the cow digit, bro. The cow yeah. digit, when the focus right is plugged into it, it, it doesn't, doesn't send work. data. Mm. You, because, which, I think you're right. It's because of the new cord. It's only yeah. charging, yep. not putting data through. So I yeah. had to plug the focus right into the acasis. And yeah. Alhamdulillah, man, you know, we uh, we figure out the struggles as we go through them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'll have to get another one of those cords that is like the cord that I'm using for the... Inshallah, the man, we'll get you... Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, once once we're done here, I'll, I'll go on Amazon and see what I can find as far as like a Thunderbolt oh, cable. That's what you need. You need a Thunderbolt cable. 
Yeah. So and I think uh, that's what I've got. It's uh, it's got a thunderbolt seg- signal on the one, but it's like what six inches long. It's super short. The one that's on the cases, but it's really yeah, no, thick. No, no, so. you need it. You need it longer than that, of course. But so we've got another guest in the background. Mashallah, we'll bring this sister up in a little bit. But first, I want to start off with what's going on in uh, in Michigan. Uh, so if anyone hasn't heard about it, now they're kind of give us a breakdown. Tell us a little bit about what's happening in Michigan. Uh, so in Michigan, right. Uh, just like the rest of the U.S., there's this whole uh, big debate about, uh, you know, the alphabet mafia representation in school, right? And if you don't know, uh, you know, I personally don't like using the terminology that they like to use. I think I feel like that's giving them power, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to call them either the alphabet mafia, the alphabet boys, you know, the letter legion, whatever you want to call them. Okay. <laughs> I just made up that letter legion right now, so uh, anyone could use that. Trademark. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but, um, but what happened was is, you know, they have these books in their library, and there's books like one, one book that I have not looked at, and I don't think many of us haven't looked at. Maybe, maybe that'll actually be a good way to break it down, but there's a book called This Book is Gay, and apparently it gets into really explicit detail about... Um, you know, just gay sexual activity and all this stuff that really should right. not be taught to kids or spoken to about oh, kids. Man. Like this has nothing to do with it's it. It's like, it's that open. Like they're talking about it that explicitly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's so, literally um, that open. So, um, so the Muslim parents, one, one parent, I think she's like a conservative Christian parent, uh, started posting about it and all of the Muslim parents. Now, if you don't know, right, Michigan is, if not the biggest congregation of Muslims in the U.S., it's one of the biggest congregation of Muslims in the U.S. So uh, one of the, I guess, the Muslim parents found out about it, and, uh, yeah, they got angry. They got really pissed off. So um, so they went to the school board, and this, this, is, this is a new story I found about it. It was just one that I found. There's a lot about it, but inshallah, let's watch it, let's react to it, and, uh, and see how it goes. but no major or significant issues at this meeting's meeting rather even though tempers and emotions certainly flare <laughs> all right so i don't know if we oh my gosh okay so we don't want this kids might be on here but this is talking about porn is fine that's this is crazy we don't the rest of that that's pretty dirty i can't believe it has Things like that in the book. Mm-hmm. I could barely hear that. Uh, the uh, the audio of the. Oh, there you go. What's that? What happened? I can't hear nothing. Brandon, can you hear me? Yeah, bro, I can't hear nothing. <laughs> I don't know if it's the wire again, bro. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if it's just me live on this stream right now, but um, uh, I know, Brandon, I, I think I can still see your picture, bro, but I can't even hear the audio. I can't see nothing on the computer at all on the uh, on the screen. I can't hear nothing other than me right now. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we can figure out here, inshallah. I'm going to take one of these earbuds out of my ear. I'm going to put in one of these airpods so i could kind of keep track of everything on my phone here because if y'all don't know is how blind people use phones is all audio stuff right um let me get this off here. Uh, and of course it doesn't want to connect automatically <laughs> yeah this is crazy hold on hold on
Subhanallah. Wow, that's uh you're me you're muted. Uh yeah, I just hit on mute. You're you're muted, Nada. Okay, now can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, what happened? Uh, you just muted it. We I played the video. Everybody watched it, and then, yeah. I was muted the whole time. No, you were actually speaking while the video was going, and then you muted afterwards. Bro, I couldn't even I couldn't even hear the video or you oh. at all. Oh, I wasn't talking. Um, but I lost. But, I I couldn't hear the video whatsoever. Okay, nobody else could hear the. Uh, well, we have a sister here up on stage. Okay. Um, sister Maymuna. It was salam alaikum. Brandon, can can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> All right, we got technical well, difficulties, so, man. Yeah, I know. It's been having a lot of problems. Salam, brother Sami. Welcome. Did you see the video? Yeah, I know. I just joined you now. I just joined you now. Oh, okay. I didn't know if. Uh, you may want to turn see off the stream in the background, inshallah. I just joined you now. I just joined you now. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, there was an echo, but now it's, it's better. Yeah, inshallah. Can you hear us both, inshallah? Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How alhamdulillah. are you doing? All right, I'm gonna alhamdulillah, do doing good. So yeah, we're talking about what's going on in um, uh, what's going on in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, did so? I guess everybody's saying they couldn't hear the video was muted. Um, that's uh, so weird. the video was muted. That's what some people are saying. Uh, let me try to play it again. Um, okay. Make sure the uh, make sure the audio because it sounded like it was just getting the audio from your computer speakers and putting it like through your microphone. Through That's mic. what it well, sounded. I'm gonna, like. I'm gonna... And now your internet is like bad. If you walk me through it, bro, I can play it. I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can see the video. But I can't hear the video. Well, I guess uh, that's that's weird. I get it could be because it's playing from a different browser here. Let's try this. Can you explain? Uh, can you explain, Brandon, what is there in that video? Oh, so we already explained it earlier. That's I can, we began I can give a quick with. brief yeah, overview. Give, a, so, give um, a quick rundown. So, so all over the country, uh, you know, there's this big fight because they're trying to push the LGBTQ agenda in in schools right for young children we're talking yes. elementary school things like that so uh so this is dearborn michigan this is probably the biggest collection of muslims in america one or you know one of the biggest areas i believe it's the biggest and this is them at school board meetings against the you know the the gay books and all that stuff that they're trying to you know put in their libraries this is what it's all about that's what the video is about mm -hmm. all right now tell me if y'all can hear it now a lot of security guards yes, but perfect. no major or significant issues at this meetings meeting rather even though tempers and emotions certainly flared tense moments and heated exchanges at dearborn school board meeting thursday night as parents, residents, and community stakeholders sounded off on LGBTQ books in the district's library system. To the LGBT community, the majority of parents are not here to attack your right to exist in a free society. <laughs> criticism of age and appropriate content is not criticism of the LGBT community. 
This was actually round two for the board, which suspended Monday's meeting over safety concerns. The massive turnout in the smaller space broke the fire code. Capacity was limited to about 600 people inside the Stout Middle School Auditorium. Those who could not get in filled overflow spaces. Almost everyone wanted to weigh in on the issue at hand. Banning LGBT books isn't going to stop anyone from being gay. It will just make them miserable and alienate them and the consequences might be fatal. Dearborn Schools is reviewing six library books, including This Book is Gay and All Boys Are Not Blue, after a parent complained about them, saying they were sexually explicit and inappropriate for kids. A normal, psychologically sound and stable mind would come to a conclusion that that specific material is nothing but sexually explicit. Those who disagree say this uproar is not about books at all. So let's stop pretending this is about protecting children from books. We all know this is about erasing our LGBTQ students and staff. It was literally written on signs people brought to the meeting on Monday. The pushback against the LGBTQ books has made unlikely bedfellows out of Muslims and some political conservatives. GOP candidates Christina Caramo and Matt DiPerno and Republican mom and Republican lawmaker Jim Runstad and Matt Maddock were front and center at Thursday's meeting. Our community, like many others across the country, is being inter, inter, intentionally sorry, divided by political players whose agenda revolves around anti-public school, anti-public school teachers, not what is best for students. This issue comes up in Dearborn, but it's the same issue we're seeing in Grand Rapids. We're seeing it in Kalamazoo. We're seeing it in northern Michigan. We're seeing it everywhere where school boards think that they can ignore the rights of the parents uh, in terms of how their children are educated. Now guys, the books in question are off the shelves as the district reviews them. It is also revamping its library book review process and is removing volumes that, quote, students are no longer using that are out of date or that are not age appropriate for that school level. Now, Dearborn Schools has also uh, made it a lot easier, is making it easier for parents to limit what books and materials their kids can have access to. Reporting live in Dearborn, I'm Randy with there we have it, guys. Uh, that's straight from the the, the donkey's the mouth. mouth, right? <laughs> yeah, it's upon a oh, law. Donkey's mouth, khair. <laughs> yeah, khair. That's uh, that's crazy, man. That's uh, what yeah. I really want to hear what everyone thinks. Uh, All right, about well, that, let's, you know, let's I got go. a lot to say, but um, welcome, brother uh, Samir. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and get kind of weigh in about what your thoughts are. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu alaykum. I'm Samir Jad. I'm one of the Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who work at Islam Chat. And uh, this is an organization where we give da'wah to non-Muslims, invite them to Islam, share with them, uh, share with them Islam online, uh, where they can come online and ask the questions uh, and we can help them, inshallah. We have, alhamdulillah, over 16 languages and uh, du'a in many countries around the world. Uh, so you can just join us, edialogue.org, and you can speak to our du'a and uh, we can, inshallah, help you and answer all your questions. Um, I also have some programs on the radio and on the TV as well. Uh, Hilal TV, ITV, and some radio stations, Voice of the Cape FM. I'm uh, originally from Egypt and also South African, living in South Africa. Uh, so I'm talking to you currently from South Africa. With regards to the video, I, oh, firstly, I said... I salute all the efforts uh, Muslims in America are doing. And I think it will be good also uh, to bring people of other faith and make them involved in, the, in this battle because uh, don't let it be a, appear like the battle between or, or, or the battle belongs only to Muslims uh, or this fight is the fight of the Muslims, but actually should bring actually people of other faith as well. And I'm sure there are some or many conservative Christians and Jews as well who, who have their opinion supporting that and bring them also with you in this in this uh, fight. Uh, at the same time, uh, we, we have to do what we are doing in in uh, while emphasizing on the on a peaceful way of, of of doing that because I'm sure there are some people uh, right there who are trying to make it more fierce and and to go out of the, you know, uh, 
trying to push the Muslims to misreact and then uh, corner them and zone them and bring back the same memories of 9-11 and all these things. So uh, it needs the, the whole matter needs some wisdom uh, dealing with it in a way uh, that, inshallah, will put some pressure on the government. And at the same time, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it's a long-term battle. It's not going to end in one night or one week or one month. But it will take some time. Uh, and to get, with that, of course, we have to speak about it, writing articles, videos, uh, having programs like this program, like now we're having discussions about it. We should be speaking about this issue more and raise more awareness, not only uh, among uh, mature people, but even even the, as the issues are now going to be taught to the children, we have to also make sure that the other side of the story is taught to our children, even by us, even in our masjids, in our with our ulama, etc. We make sure that we are teaching them so when they go there at least they they got the other side of the story as well from from our perspective i mean absolutely mashallah that's amazing that's uh i think so this show is called uh tomorrow that we'll be doing is the good and the bad and the ugly but i want to go ahead and give you your rating uh brother samir we're going to give you the good boom <laughs> mashallah mashallah we love you brother all right uh sister maimuna uh, welcome to the show. Do you have anything to weigh in on uh, what you just saw? Do you, what's your opinions on this, sister? She might be having some technical difficulties too. All right, brother Nadir, we'll we'll go to you while we wait for the sister to talk. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't muted. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Listen, guys, whenever I'm on stream, you're going to see me go looking really close at things because I can't see what's happening. So <laughs> those of you who don't know Brother Nader, who haven't seen him on the many times I've had him on, uh, Brother Nader is legally blind and he runs the organization with his wife, Islam by Touch. So, guys, after this, go check it out or even while you're watching, go check it out. Support that project. It's it's really amazing the work that they're doing. Dawah to the, uh, the blind and disabled community. Alhamdulillah. So what do, you, what do you think about this? I mean, you, you were the one who um, brought this to my attention earlier. Yeah, no, but... it, one, what I, okay, I got a lot to say about this. All right. I know, I um, know. <laughs> all right. Uh, first and foremost, let's make something very clear. This is something that's happening all over the United States, right? And this is one reason why, alhamdulillah, we homeschool our kids. We homeschool our kids here, right? Um, it's not the main reason. It's not the primary reason. Uh, but it's a big, big reason why, right? That people are trying to push this agenda down your throat, especially here in the United States and in the West in general, right? Um, when you turn off your brain, right? When you turn off your brain and you accept everything that, especially like the, the progressive liberal left feeds you, and even the right, you know, they're, they're both wrong, right? We are, we are, we're Muslims, we live on the middle path. That's what we strive for, right? So I have this... Uh, very strong idea that these guys keep just live on extremes constantly. But right now we're talking about an extremely progressive left issue, which is this, you know, this feeding of the alphabet mafia, right? They're going to put a hit on you if you don't accept what they, what they push your way. And there's a couple of things. Number one, this, this stuff should never be talked about in, 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 in school, right? In a public school setting where kids are supposed to be learning math and English and, uh, you know, history, which, you know, the history they learn there is garbage, but uh, real history uh, and just the no science, these things. Why, why, why should a book about being gay be in the library? What's that got to do with anything? What's that got to do with your intellectual development? It doesn't, right? It's up to the parents to educate their children about whatever they want to educate them when it comes to any sort of sexual activity. Um, as far as the parents, I think they went too soft. I'm going to be real with you. The Muslim parents, they went too soft. They're like, oh, this isn't about this or that. And they're like, I don't care if you want to be gay, be gay and all this. And, and no, bro, no. No, 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 no. Like, stop, stop playing this, uh, this political game, man. You know what I mean? Like, listen, yeah, this is America. Yeah. You do whatever you want to do, right? Just stop trying to force it onto me. Just like you wouldn't want me to be like, yo, why aren't you a Muslim? What is wrong with you? You know, I'm here to share the message. It's up to you if you want to accept it or not. 
right? We're not here yeah. to force you. And then whenever we say, oh, you're not accepting Islam, you're a bigot. You're a racist. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're prejudiced. You're xenophobic because you're not accepting Islam. I'm not, and this is, this is the fine line, right? Like it's not about being tolerant towards other people that you live around and that you live with in a society. If that was the case, there would be no issue. The issue is that not only are you, not only do you have to be tolerant of it, and tolerant means it's something you don't like, but you deal with it because that's part of being a society, right? Not only is it being tolerated, you have to love it. You have to accept it. You have to wave the flag for it. You have to encourage your children to go into it. Like, let me tell you something. The other day, my daughter was watching this show. It's called Muppet Babies, for those who don't know. Um, it's an old show that they remade. I don't know, Brandon, if you remember Muppet Babies, when it, Muppet Babies whenever you were a kid or not. I remember Muppets. I don't know about the, the, the Muppet Babies, I think, started coming out whenever I was maybe in junior high, high school. No, so no, I no, was no, already no, 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 no. We're talking when I was a kid, Muppet Babies was around. So mm. I'm 37, so maybe I'm showing my age. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but they just revamped the show, right? And my daughter, who's five, my five-year-old daughter likes to watch it. And I'm just walking by the room. And they always announce the name of the episode, and it's like Gonzarella. It's about Gonzo, who is a Muppet, who wants to dress up like a princess. Like, bro, they're trying to feed it to your children in any way possible. So personally, I think the parents got, they went too soft on this. I think we need, you know, like, especially there, they're the majority. They're the majority, right? So yeah. if they don't want to listen to you guys and they don't want to actually... Uh, do what you're telling them to do. Like, yo, stop talking about this crap. I don't want to hear teachers saying, oh, this is my pronouns and all this garbage. This has nothing to do with education. Nothing at all. All this is is they want to corrupt your children so they could fall into this garbage because that's the trend. That's what's hot in the streets now, right? That's what's hot in the streets. That's how you get notoriety. You got to be gay. You got to be trans. You got to be non-binary. You got to be something like that. So... Um, I think the parents went weak on this. It's not even about, you know, oh, people are going to be like, oh, these Muslims are crazy. No, because we got a huge contingent of Christians right there with us, right? So what we need to do is, is we need to cooperate with the like-minded people, uh, like, you know, like-minded, the like-minded people to us, those who are thinking in the same way when it comes to this and really, you know, just cut this extremism out of the way. Because that's what this is. This is extremism. This is going too far. So, yeah, that's what I got to say about it. You know, I, <laughs> I, uh, I noticed something. I think Sister Maimuna, she's got something to say here in a second. But um, what, one thing I really noticed was in there, you, if you remember the, the short-haired uh, lesbian lady, she had made the comment that this is not about books. This is about these people. We know who she's talking about. Wanting to erase LGBT students and teachers, right? Like she's like being one of those complete victims. She's playing that victim card like 100%. You know, and, and what you saw in the beginning you know, on that poster, I don't even want to mention some of the things that were written down, but that book that's, that's there, the, mm -hmm. uh, the I'm gay, gay book. This, this book is, is gay. gay. Book. Yeah. There are things that have to do with like poop and like things that you're not supposed to do with it. Like you're supposed to use the bathroom. That's what you do with it, right? But in this book that they're teaching these little kids, they're mm -hmm. talking about other things to do with it, okay? And so when people are reacting that this is disgusting, you can't put this in books and say that this is okay, that you think for some reason that makes us like want to go out and harm and erase gay people. Yes, do we want the gay movement erased? Yes, we want the movement erased. But she's over dramatizing, right? She's making a mountain well, out of a mohill. Well, that, that's what they do. This whole, now, I mean, maybe we could find some more clips to, to show. But if you look at the two sides, right? You have the, you have the uh, pro-gay book side and the anti-gay book side, right? So yeah. uh, 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 the pro-gay book side, all they do is emotional, 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 nothing, no logic, none, zero. As you can see, hear what she said, she is, uh, or the, uh, one person was like, oh, this, uh, the, the, the dude, he was like, oh, the, all they're trying to do is trying to erase this, and it could lead to fatal, uh, fatal repercussions. Exactly. It like, could. Bro, it like, could. bro, shut up, man. Just shut up. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, because it makes sense it's fatal? Shut the hell up, man. This is this is but, so stupid. But what they like, don't talk about is the things that really are fatal, which is HIV yeah. and AIDS. Things that you, being part of this community, have a more than 50% chance of 
taking you to a sh a shorter life, right? Yeah. And I don't see how they don't see this. Sister Maymuna, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Assalamu alaikum. What do you think about that video that you just saw? Um, I think it's pretty disturbing, uh, to be honest. But alhamdulillah, I'm glad that people are uh, standing up against it and getting their voice out there, I guess you could say. Um, and I, I agree with a lot of what Nadir said, but I do disagree a little bit that I think that we do need to be a little more tactful with how we say things. Um, or else they're just going to come and attack us saying that we're being emotional. You know, I think there's a fine line between, okay, the truth is the truth, but the way that you say it really affects how that message is going to um, get across to people. And so um, I think the way they handled it, from what I saw in the video, was that was that um, they, I feel like they did pretty good, alhamdulillah. Oh, mashallah. Okay. I appreciate that, uh, that uh, perspective. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do see that because you do got to think about it. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from, Nadir. You know, about like we don't want to just – at what point is it going to – enough is enough, right? I see that. Like are we just going to pander? The only, the only reason why I say this is because in, in the beginning, right, and you know this, like, and we really don't have to sugarcoat this that much. So many imams are so soft on this, Right. So many imams are so soft on this within our specific communities. And they want to have conversations with them and they want to do all these things, right? And what happens? Then everyone start, you know, people start thinking it's okay. You know what I mean? And um, what, and, I'm, and of course, I'm not saying people need to go crazy. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm saying is, is, um, it's okay to to actually be a little more firm because that's it. Like they they act like victims, right? Like I use the I use an analogy of the LGBTQ community to Israel, right? This is the analogy I use. They constantly claim victimhood, and they are some of the most pow They're the, one of the most powerful groups on earth. They're bullies. <laughs> they're exactly. bullies playing the victim. Exa exactly. Yeah. Everybody so knew so what like do we do? Do we do we do we play nice with bullies? You know what I mean? Or do we shut them down? And, and the thing is, it's, it's not just us, right? They can't just point the finger and say, oh, look at these Muslims. No, they, half the, the country is absolutely like, it's not even a division. Majority of, majority of the country, I believe there was, a, uh, there was a, a poll that showed that majority of the country, one of the biggest issues they have is this, this, this being fed to their children without their knowledge or without their acknowledgement. So, um, so that was the only point I was making. But of course, I I I, I agree that that yeah, we sh we should be tactful. Yes, one hundred percent. But but like I said, we shouldn't we shouldn't be taking it easy on these on these people. Not at all. Not these people with such power. Like if you can't take it, bro, just get out of the way. And yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I yeah, I you, agree. Brandon, too. No, no, yeah, I agree. Then um, that yeah, you can be firm, but tactful at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like where where you're not going up to the argument in the podium making she's saying don't be like them making emotional statements as Muslim come up there with extremely good facts presenting arguments on why this is wrong in using their own criteria like you want us to have you know a, a free society according to us we do not agree that it is proper for us you know we want to choose what our kids are learning and we don't want them to learn these things so i think the guy at the end i don't know if he was a reporter or if he was part of the school district um the guy in the suit he was talking about this how parents you know it, they need to have their voices heard if they don't like something in that community then you know they need to speak up about it right and this is good i, I think overall what happened was people saw the outturn people saw that maybe five ten twenty people there were in support of the lgbt community and then the rest were conservative Christians and um, the Muslims. But did you notice the, the news reporter, what she said, how this made unlikely allies mm -hmm. between Muslims and political conservatives? Yeah. And, and I, I don't even understand. Like, it's crazy because I was watching some reactions from conservatives about this. And they were so shocked that Muslims are against this. Seriously, because like, of the track record that like, Muslim imams because they're so soft the, on it, bro. So I'm many Muslims you. are making these 
connections like we have to vote democrat we have to mm -hmm. be liberal making all of these like let's be their friends because the republicans they make see, and I, we we're talking about this last week on my show that i believe one of the things that has been a psyop right this is something that's you know in the background what is um, psyop? being put what it, it means to like on a larger level mm -hmm. controlling the way that people like perceive things okay. right it's been an agenda pushing to there has been an actual agenda making the muslim community um ally with democrats and liberals even though we are so far removed from them not yeah. only economically but socially and in many other aspects right mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. for the sake that we have a survival instinct right so they've made muslims fear the conservatives so much because they don't want us to ally with them and i believe it's because those people who are controlling all this they know that muslims at any point in time we could break out with teaching people what real Islam is. And those people who are closest to us are the ones who are going to accept it faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the converts that I know, right, I've met less than 10, less than on my two hands. Out of all the converts I've ever met, less than 10 have been liberals, Democrats. Almost all of the converts that I've met from the U.S. have all been socially conservative. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, listen, I don't I don't recommend anyone to join or affiliate with a political party. Right? And we're not I'm, saying that. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, but who are we closer aligned to when it comes to uh, pretty much all the stances and all of the uh, the main topics? We generally align with the conservative side of things. Right. And it all really went awry after 9-11. That's probably when it all went because it, yes, of the it's been uh, fear mongering. Yeah, the geopolitical system. We're going to the, be massacred. We're yeah, going to be murdered. The, uh, you know, right? the, um, uh, uh, God, um, you know, Dick Cheney's company running pipelines through Afghanistan, uh, you know, just the whole rhetoric from the right, because that was a right wing government, right, at that point. But the thing is, is, you know, some left leaning politicians started saying, no, not all Muslims are like this. And then all Muslims like, oh, my God, that's the way we got to go. Right. And that that was the issue. That's the problem. But the thing is, is, bro, like, I don't understand it. Like, how gullible are these people? How gullible are majority of Muslims to be just, oh, well, you know, the, the left like us. So it is what it is. Like, you don't understand how they're trying to dilute your Islam, how they're trying to weaken you. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you a question, Brother Nader. Sure. What do you think is more dangerous for Muslims? Is it people who are in your face? You know they're your enemy. Say, for example, you have a you know somebody who is a conservative. They, they hate Islam. They're like, we hate your prophet. I hate Islam. For some you know, reason. Tell, because uh, they don't know nothing. But anyway, go ahead. Or, or, do you, or, or someone who, to your face, they're, they're nice to you. They pretend to be your friend. But behind your back, they are working, they have all of these agendas that are anti-Islam, that want to change Islam, that want to put, in effect, teachings to teach your kids that, oh, these things are okay in Islam. Which one do you think is more dangerous? Which one do you think is, you know, the, the, more, the, yeah, the more dangerous of the two enemies? I think it's uh, very obvious that the, uh, the second option is the more dangerous, no doubt about it. Because, I mean, think about it, right? Everybody, especially Muslims... They loved Obama, right? A lot of Muslims loved Obama. Who, but who drone striked more Muslims than anyone else before Obama? You know what I mean? Nobody. Like, nobody. He's, he's the king nobody. of drones. Nobody. He's the king of drone strikes, bro. Even to the point to where as he joked about it, he joked Absolutely. about it on stage on one of the correspondence dinners. Like, that's how cold-blooded you are, bro. You're joking about drone, drone striking people. Like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? He, you know? And, and don't get me wrong. I don't like any of them. I think they're all corrupt yeah. pieces of garbage. I really yeah. do. Obama, I think Akil, Trump, Akil said Biden, nice. Bush, whatever. They all suck. They all suck. But um, it's, it's, it's a situation where as the, you know, like these people, they will smile in front of your face. The, you know, Democrats more than anyone else. They'll smile in front of your face. And then behind your back, they will, you know, as a Palestinian, they will, you know, support Israel like there's nobody's business like it's nobody's business you know what i mean yeah. they will i mean and and that's the sad thing right like these people are the only people like especially the progressive left they're the only people that got it got it somewhat right on palestine but everything else they absolutely fail in right absolutely failing 
So it's like, what are you going to do? You got to pick your poison, right? So that's why I just say, man, stay out of the politics, stay out of the garbage, and just educate yourselves on what's really going on. Yeah. Brother, uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, yeah, John Don said, the enemy from inside is the worst, that you do not know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the hypocrites. Yeah, the manafiqeen. You know, yeah. especially from amongst the Muslims. Yeah. I guess we'll be we'll be talking about that soon when it comes to Andrew Tate. There were some people who made some very interesting uh, statements after he became Muslim, but we'll get into that. That we're not we're not there yet. But um, yeah. anybody else, I just want to remind you all that we uh, we do have the link uh, here posted in the uh, in the in the chat. So anyone who wants to come up and talk, you know, feel free. Uh, to come up here. Inshallah, we want to get your opinions and we'd love to talk to you. And any non-Muslims who might be watching as well, we welcome you up here. Uh, we're always open to, you know, uh, have a little chit chat and have some nice, respectful, open dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it doesn't matter, bro. You're gay. You're trans. You think you're a tree. Come on in. Let's have a conversation. Try, you know, like, let, let's just have a discussion. I'm not trying to be, uh, listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you know, the thing is, you push someone so far, you push people so far with your rhetoric. What do you expect? Right? Like it goes, it went from, it went from, we just want to be, we just want our privacy, right? We just want to be treated like normal human beings to, we got to have a parade every three weeks. You know what I mean? We yeah. need to, we need to bring, uh, oh God, what are those dudes? The dudes that dress up like ladies and dance, what are they called? Drag queens. Drag, drag queens. queens. We got to have drag queens come and read books to children. And we need to, you know, in, in school. And we need to have uh, open drag shows. Like, come on, man. Like, yo, there's a... Oh, man, there's so much more we could talk about, bro. Like, so much more. Let me just... Okay, so there was a... Uh, there was an event. Maybe... I don't... We, we can't show the clip because this is way too vulgar. Way too much. But... um there was something that happened on NBC, I believe it was last week or the week before. They were celebrating their 40-year anniversary and had something called Friday Night Live. And they had a trans comedian on there. And uh, he was like, what he said was like, you know what's great about live TV? You could do it. I can do this. And he literally like stripped naked. What? On stage. No naked, way. And ran across stage and he was singing and doing a whole thing and he played the piano with do I really got to explain it? They didn't. They didn't show it. Like, like oh, they showed it. Right? it. They no, showed they, it. They censored it. They had no way. No, they. Sh it's live, bro. We're live, pal. It was live, so they let it go. But this is the thing. Whenever people spoke about it afterwards, what, what if a heterosexual male did that? What do you think would happen? What if a heterosexual female did that? What do you think would happen? They, they, what they did was the commentary. You can look up the commentary if you'd like. The commentary on this was, this was hilarious. This was groundbreaking. Like, bro, this is out of hand, man. This is way out of hand. And we got to bring it back to reality. Like, you can't just let people get away with things because they have this faux victimhood and everyone's buying into it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. So yeah, come on, please. Let's have a discussion, please. <laughs> like like you said, even if you think you're a tree, come on, we'll we'll yeah, listen. Let's we'll, go. Let's talk. We'll pick, your, we'll pick your leaves. Yeah. <laughs> we'll pick the we'll pick the fruit off the the branches. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Um, so yeah, man, that that's what I have to say in regards to that. It's just it's so frustrating. It's too much. These guys are going way too far. And, uh, and yeah, man, like I'm, I'm happy to see so many people because this isn't just Dearborn. This happened all over the country. It's just Dearborn is where Muslims are actually standing up and being like, no, we, we're not doing this. And it's not really a religious community. They're very culturally Muslim, if that makes any sense. But I give them this much. At least they're they have their, you know, their morals. Right. At least they have their morals. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got I've got this on the screen now. So basically, it's a CBS News poll, and the, the, the title of this article is how it's disturbing that there's still, much this much, there's still this much LGBT hate mm -hmm. because of this, this, uh, this poll, right? And so they took a poll, and it's 
transgender student athletes should play on a team that, of these two choices, match their birth sex. So you should play on a team that you were born as that birth or matches the gender that you identify with. And they're saying that because 60% of the population still believes that you should only play on a team that matches your birth sex, that this is disturbing for LGBT community. Like it's, the way that they're wording everything, yeah. it's it's you can tell that it's like you're it's very militant. I mean, this this is this is propaganda. Like they want to make sure to sensationalize it so that you, as a human being, you know, they what they do is is they put these words so that you say, no, 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 I'm not that. I I'm definitely not that. Right. That's what they're yeah. trying to do by using terminology like that. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about this, uh, Sister Maimona? No, you there? Do you think that women should be able to play on men's teams and men should be able to pretend to be women and play on women's teams? Do you hear her? Because I don't hear her. No, it, it could be yeah, something else. I don't know. Anyway, um, right, so if, any, if, if there's any other buddy in the, in the audience who you know wants to come up and give us your opinion, I have the link posted. Listen, uh, come, come talk. Let's let's have a conversation, right? But I'm, I'm gonna be real with you, man. This and I say that a lot. This is a New Jersey thing. We say that a lot. Uh, but <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I try to be real all the time. So, uh, but the thing is, it's I mean, come on. Why are you going to have dudes saying that they uh, identify as women, right, or as females, going to play sports against a bunch of naturally born women and females? This is so ridiculous anyone who thinks that this is logical or that this is fair or that this is the way things should be you are stupid bro like it's simple yeah. that's what you are your brain is not functioning the way it should be because go ask go ask um go ask uh uh, uh the the you the the mma fighter that's transgender and go ask the go ask the woman that she absolutely destroyed because you know let's be honest he, that was that absolutely destroyed. destroyed that the dude absolutely that destroyed, destroyed. Yeah. go go ask go ask the volleyball player who got a concussion because a transgender dude on the other side spiked the ball and it hit her so hard it literally gave her a concussion like this is out of control bro like this is the issue if you refuse to put your brain you know take your brain out and put it in your pocket or lock it up in a box right if you refuse to do that you're a bigot you're a transphobe you're a homophobe you're all these things it is absolutely ridiculous absolutely ridiculous yeah no i mean i agree i mean I, and and really to be completely honest think about this women have been trying to push for you know equality and rights and like you know you would assume that feminism being what it is and what it wants for women, okay, they're pushing for women. Now, these people who are joining now, they're men. Like, let's not play games. They're men. They're stronger. They're faster. You can do all that you want. How you can't lie you, about biology, if you're bro. If you're a logical feminist, how can you stand with men who are chopping their you-know-what's off, pretending mm -hmm. to be women, and then destroying women in all of the sports – how can you say that this is helping support your own women, your own real women? Like, that's yeah. why you, you have to come down. What is a woman, man? What is a woman then? <laughs> what is it? Tell me you now. Wanna, that what is you, a woman? You want to react to that documentary? <laughs> well, we can play it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long, a long, uh, they have, long They have clips. Maybe we'll get some clips um, ready uh, next time, inshallah, so we can do inshallah, this. But, inshallah, inshallah. No, and, and, and the thing is, that's why they have a whole section of feminists called TERFs. If you heard of the term TERF. Yeah, uh, I don't know what it stands for exactly, but uh, something it, they're they're feminists against trans women. That's pretty much uh. what they are. Like they're against the idea of a trans woman being, you know, uh, uh, man. We got to think of a better word. They're, they're against the idea of a dude in drag being named, uh, you know, woman of the year. It, yeah, it's right. it's easier in Arabic. Yeah. They call them they call them shemales and muha, uh, muhawil, right? Someone who like transfers, someone who like transitions, like to whatever. So yeah. I, you just call them trannies. 
I mean, sure. I know that's a derogatory term, but I mean, that's so easy. Um, or we actually back in college, we used to call them traps, right? It's traps. a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap, bro. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. They put the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, uh, yeah. That, that car ain't going to be running too well afterwards. It's a trap. No, Look who we got on the stage. Brother John Fontaine. Salamu alaikum with the young smirks. Welcome, brother John. Looks like everybody's having man. We it's it's a night full of technical. Bro, I can't see, and my audio's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's up. I got his picture up. He just caught on. I don't. He, he, Howdy, he partner. Howdy, hey, man. <laughs> I tell you what, you've been you've been hearing about what's happening there in Dearborn. Oh, like, keeping no, up no. with the events over there. Wait, I'll be right back. What's Hold going on? on? Not, not much. You can you can hear me right all there, the man. All the way in Alabama. All the way from. I can Middle hear East and Bama. Clear. All right, that's good. That's good. All right. Well, uh, you you beat to on a, on a serious level. Had, were you watching the beginning? You know what we're, what's going on in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, with the books. Know what's happening? All right, I'm oh, back. So we we just played. I, I the felt video. like I felt like I was the only one without a hat. What's going so. on? <laughs> yeah, you, you were the only one without a hat. So yeah. no, I joined. Um, I joined the party. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, Salam um, alaikum, uh, brother John. My name is Nadir. Uh, from an organization called enough. Islam by Touch, making Islam accessible to the blind community. How you doing, Akhi? Alhamdulillah. I think I Salam think alaykum. John. Salam he's he's a bit patchy. I'm just trying to sort it You out, are man. laggy, John. I'm I'm connected to Ethernet router, so my internet should be good. I've got the cable plug in. So hey, Alhamdulillah, it's all good. Alhamdulillah. Um, so uh, so let me give you the breakdown real quick, uh, John, inshallah. Uh, there is a lot of debates happening around the United States about, you know, teaching the alphabet mafia's motto in the in schools. So um, so we just showed a video and reacted to a video in, from Dearborn, Michigan, which is probably the most populated Muslim area in the United States, if not one of the most and how they're like in school boards arguing about these books uh, pushing the LGBTQ agenda. Mm. So we're trying to get your thoughts on that. Okay, just just give me give me give me a couple of minutes. Let me just sort this internet out, inshallah. No, okay, right, no sure. problem. No yeah, problem. Um, yeah. So, so what in the meantime, saying, uh, I... we... okay. Do you want to read something? Somebody no, put no, in no. The comments just get, get ready. Get ready. Okay. I don't you can know what finish I'm, what you're gonna say. I don't know what I'm getting ready for. <laughs> you're like, get ready, like, get ready for what, bro? <laughs> well, what we're what we're what we're gonna go over pretty soon. We got some good stuff coming up. I'm ready. So, Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready, bro. John, can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah, but I'm just okay. having a bit of an issue with my. Uh... So you know, this is going back over what I was, you know, trying to say earlier um, about the, the, uh, the, the feminist. Like, if you think about it, oh yeah, we're right? talking about turfs, yeah, yeah. They they have yeah. to, they they. If you're a logical feminist, you have to oppose this, right? Because you're infringing on the women that you've been championing for so long to have their rights, and now men are entering into your sports and you complain about men getting more of this, men getting more of that, and now they're entering into your sports and they're winning. They're, they're now possibly going to be getting contracts to make the money that you want to make as, as men, right? That's but, the only way the WNBA is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so I want to show this, this article, Yahoo News, the, this is how you know forceful they are. This is how militant these trannies are. So the article here um, was here back in June. It says feminists who oppose transgender rights are not true feminists, says mm. pioneering trans athlete. And that is uh, Schuler Bailar um, is, is a trans athlete who is trying to convince people. He's from Harvard, right? You have one of the most prestigious institutes in the United States, in the world, you know, 
you know, allowing for the pioneering of this. And, and it shows you that the meta, right, the, the people at the top, this is, this is what they want, right? They, they're pushing for this. Why they want it, Allahu alam. I, can, the, I have a theory. But yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I do theory. too. I do too. And it's the same reason why you see, and I know this, this might you know, give us problems with YouTube, but this is the same reason why you see that behind most of these organizations, behind the, the lesbian organization, the, the Daughters of Lilith, and a lot of these organizations, and even NAMBLA, the North American Man Boy Love Association, you yeah. know who started a lot of these really liberal organizations? Just use uh, use uh, terminologies that may not get you, you know. Not okay. Off. Yeah. Those those, <laughs> those the the, the Just people who about this close to getting canceled, bro. <laughs> the the, Yo, the people the, the people account. who claim to follow. Who who claim to follow the prophets, but they don't follow Jesus and Muhammad? Just, just say just say your cousins, bro. Just Our say cousin. Nadir, your cousins. <laughs> your cousins, Nadir. Your cousins, Nadir. They're the ones. I I I I I, I, I shoot you not, man. I, cousins, I shoot you bro. not. That even the NAACP, right? Mm -hmm. When they first began, they were run by your cousins. Mm -hmm. And what happened? <laughs> And the North, North American, the Southern Poverty Law Center, these people that champion civil rights and all this stuff, you know their, their, their numbers, they lose almost all of their court cases. The North the NAACP, they were so sterile, right, in their first years. And this is what you see. A lot of the things that champion, like, civil rights in this, that are, they, they're actually... You can tell that they're not really helping championing these people's causes, right? In this, they're not really working that hard. And then they go and win in their own book. I mean, they're strong. If you go to a Orthodox community, yeah, you know, they're not gonna ever allow anyone in their community to commit any gay stuff, right? If you go to New York and go to yeah, an Orthodox yeah, no. community, they're yeah. not gonna let it happen. But yet, at the top most levels, it is people who claim to be from this community who are the CEOs of these organizations. They're the ones. At the, the reformists, front and foremost. The, the reformists and the liberals amongst them. Right. Yeah. Right. But so what I'm saying, some people say that it is a plan even from the Orthodox, so it's to weak down their enemies. And Allah knows best. I mean, I just think it's a good way to weaken the men, uh, you know, just weaken men in general. And because once you weaken the men, you destroy the home. And once you destroy yeah. the home, that's when you can feed the, the community the children, and then after the community want. is the whole society and then yeah. after the society it's easy pickings exactly they're just right? they're just breaking it down you know what i mean they're just just bringing it down level by level uh absolute destruction from the men to the from the fathers to the mothers to the children that's how it works so Take a little bit about schuyler bylar um he he was he made history right he was the first openly transgender athlete to compete in the NAACP. So he actually had uh, the, uh, uh, the, the NCAA in, NCAA. <laughs> I'm already, yeah. I'm still thinking about the, the past. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> in high school, he had set a national record on swimming on the women's team. Right? Yeah. The, these exactly. women, these women aren't setting records, but this guy goes and joins. Yeah. And, and he, he crushes the record. Crushes it. Um, <laughs> subhanAllah. And and how after Ridiculous. after realizing he was actually a trans man and began hormone therapy, he joined. So he was, oh my God, the t team and graduated years later as an uh, an elite swimmer in North Collegiate Athletes Association First Division. And today, the 26 year old Korean American is a powerful voice in the debate over whether trans athletes should be allowed to compete in the category that matches their gender. As he has sharp words for feminists who believe that they should be barred. They're TERFs, right? They're mm -hmm. totally known as TERFs. So the, the TERFs are the, the feminists who are actually saying, no, we're not going to accept this. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think of what, what the term, what's the actual uh, acronym mean? I'm trying they're to saying it means they're gender. Here it says, quote unquote, gender critical, right? Um, which means they make, which means they actually think. Does that they mean? actually yeah, they they, critically they, think. They, yeah, they, they think. have a little bit of a. How dare you a, think? <laughs> That's yeah, really what they're one. telling you, right? Yeah, mashallah. Look, I love you, Joey. Uh, this person, mashallah, has been for the sake of Allah. I always constantly posting to everyone, like, subscribe for the sake of Allah. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys do like our content and also go and make some dua for Joy. She is here, she's one of our mods, and she does a lot of good work helping moderate the chat and also just giving good, beneficial reminders in the chat. 
we we really thank you, uh, Sister. May Allah elevate you to the highest levels. I mean, I mean, I mean. Uh, Medina, Medina Dawas, alaikum salam, sister. What's the topic? The topic is well, today it's in the saddle, so it is basically just a news update. What's going on in the ummah? We're talking about uh, events, current events right now. We are talking about what has happened in the Dearborn community, which is one of the largest Muslim communities inside the United States, if and not the largest, right? Yeah, if not the largest, yeah. And they are there's a lot of pushback from the community against this book that was released and is allegedly being pushed to be taught to the children there in Dearborn. And it's called, I think I'm gay or I am a gay no, no, man. It's called this book is gay. This book. Okay, it's and, called and this it's book one. Is gay. It's one of it's one of six books that they're going. Now, like I said, we don't know what's in the book. I don't know what's in the book, right? I'm just going off of what I've heard is what's yeah. in the book. But a lot of people have been raising a lot of hell about this book, right? A lot of people. And, um, and I mean, just, uh, just off of off of the you know just off of the anecdotes that I've heard from many many uh, correspondents, many people who speak on things like this. It, uh, apparently, it goes into really deep detail about homosexual acts. How to? I, uh, one one commentator said it tells you it tells a young it tells a person how to have a homosexual relationship with a younger person. Right. So it is something that should not be <laughs> available to elementary school kids, bro. Like, what no, the heck? like, no, this shouldn't be available to grown, grown adults, bro. <laughs> like, wow. forget, about, forget about elementary school <laughs> kids. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on this, uh, brother? John, John, you got your internet good, inshallah? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. And it, it's, it all started with you guys over in the States. And it's coming over to us now in the UK. Hey, don't blame this the, on me, the man. Virus, the virus has spread, huh? The virus is kind of <laughs> mingling itself over over to you. you. Your cowboys didn't get your house in order. So it's now crossed <laughs> over to us, man. Subhanallah. Oh. He's he's a cowboy. I'm a Yankee. I guess that's, that's what they'd call me. Right? I don't know if y'all ever Yankee? saw Full Metal Jacket. What was that? He said uh, they ain't got nothing but... Uh, um, don't say it, man. I don't want to say it. It's bad. <laughs> You know what it is? I'll but say it's funny it. I don't because care, back bro. I'm not trying to get you like there weren't no gay people in Texas. I'm not trying I'm not trying to get you taken off, bro. But all they said was in Texas, all they got is steers and a word that rhymes with that that starts with a Q. Yeah. <laughs> that's but that's funny because Full Metal Jacket was a late 70s, 80s movie, and there, back in that time, like you ain't you ain't gay in Texas. No. So hell no. Even today, I mean, even listen. This is the this is the situation, bro. It's like do whatever the hell you want to do behind closed doors in your bedroom. Just why are you trying? We're not saying to... it's okay either. We're no, just saying we can't stop you. Nobody's saying that. We're just but... saying we can't stop you. Yeah, no, we can't stop you doing for what you're doing, bro. Just stop, stop trying to make us love it and walk with you and join. And I mean, one I remember one guy. People, some of these trans guys are so angry that heterosexual males don't want to date them. Oh God! Like angry, legitimately angry. It's like, what is uh, nobody? No, get out of here, bro. <laughs> get out of here. Um, is the is the issue that bad in the you're, you're in the UK, right, John? Well, I'm I'm actually living in Turkey. I, oh, I got see, away man. From the UK. Subhanallah, I just came back from Turkey, man. I was uh I was in Istanbul for like a week. Tell us how the trip was. Tell tell everybody about it. Tell us a little bit about what 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 you did there. That's a current event, mashallah. And they have this every year, don't they? Uh, no, they have it like every three years. Oh, every three like years. That. But at least um, they're still doing something, mashallah. Yeah. And so we what? Don't see uh, other countries. What I went to was uh, there's an organization, an umbrella organization based out of Turkey. Like their headquarters are in Turkey. It's called the International Union of Braille Quran Services, and uh, they had their general assembly. Have you heard of that, John? No, I've not actually. No. No. Okay. Khair. Um, so they, uh, what they have is they every three years they have a general assembly. It was supposed to be in 2020, but because of COVID, everything got delayed. But alhamdulillah, they had it this year, and I was able to participate. And what it is, it's member organizations from all over the world. We're talking, you know, I'm, I think I'm the only organization in the West, meaning, you know, between U.S., Canada, U.K., Australia. I believe we're the only organization mm -hmm. that works with them. Uh, but they have organizations from Southeast Asia, Middle East, Africa, I mean, you name it. Do you know Brother Abu Hafsa in uh, 
think he's in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Abu, yeah. Abu Hafsa is actually a, a good friend of ours, alhamdulillah. A very good friend of uh, of mine uh, out of Canada. Yes, yeah, our boy. That's both mine and Brandon's boy. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, mashallah. We got history. Hafsa, we'll, have, we'll have Abu Hafsa on one episode and just tell stories. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I, I, I know story, but um, but yeah. So, what we did was is oh, so the whole point of the of IBQS International Union of Braille Quran Services is, uh, Quran in Braille, the actual Mushaf Arabi Braille, right? So Braille is a system of dots that blind people use to read, right? And it's available in every language. So there's Arabic Braille, Spanish Braille, Chinese Braille, English Braille, and they're all different from another. They they relate to each other, but they are different. This is the thing. A lot of people presume it's the same, right? Yes. There's a big Many people think it's there. just one universal thing. Yes. Yeah. So um, so what happens is, is with the Mus'haf, there's Arabic Braille, but then there is Quranic Braille. And what Quranic Braille is, it's combining Arabic Braille along with symbols for the, the things that we need to read Quran. Harakat, um, you know, places to stop. Uh, places to like mid and all that stuff, you know, like, uh, you know, Sukun, Fatha, Dhamma, all that. Uh, now, what the conflict is, is from country to country, it's different. So in one country, right. they'll put the character for a Fatha before the letter. In another country, they'll put the character for a Fatha after the letter. In another country, in like I believe in Egypt, they have them on a separate line. So they actually have the Fathas above the other Braille letter, which is problematic because you can't read Braille up and down. It's left to right. Um, and even past that, in some countries, the character for Fatha may be different than other countries. Same thing with all the other diacritical marks. So yeah. uh, so the whole point oh, of IBQS, is it, follow? Is it? Is it? Is it comparable to like a transliteration where it, it sounds of the, the particular language of the country? Or is it uh, a language in of itself? Are, are we talking about the diacritical marks or Quranic Braille? The Quranic Braille. Uh, the Quranic then... Braille is based off of Arabic Braille, right? Okay. So, it, so it's based off of Arabic Braille. So if you're blind and born in a, in a Middle Eastern Arabic speaking country, you will learn how to mm. read Arabic Braille. But the yeah. difference the difference comes in is what country you're in and what Braille Quran print are you reading from? So the whole point of this international union of Braille Quran services is to unify the Quranic Braille code so that any blind person who knows how to read this Quran in Braille, you know, how to know how to read Arabic Braille, will be taught this Quranic Braille code and they could go anywhere in the country, United States, Africa, Turkey, anywhere in the world. And be able to pick up a Braille Quran and know how to read it without any issues. That's pretty much the goal yeah. of this international organization that we're a part of. So, um, alhamdulillah, we went out. Uh, I went uh, as as you know, representing our organization here in the states, Islam by Touch, uh, being the only organization uh, and the first organization to properly edit and format an English translation of the Quran into Braille. And is the uh, is widely accepted as the uh, you know the best English translation in Braille that we have available. Alhamdulillah, very proud to say that. Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, this was able to be. And uh, so we went, and uh, Alhamdulillah, they uh, they elected a new board and actually put me on the board. So I am uh, second vice president on the board Allah of the Akbar. International Union of Braille Quran Services. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Last time, um, last time it happened, I believe. Uh, uh, what's his name? Abu Hafsa, he actually got to meet Erdogan. Is that Abu true? Abu Hafsa went to the first meeting that they had. So the first, uh, the first, it's IBQS has been around since 2012, right? 2012. And their first general assembly was in 2014. And Alhamdulillah, they actually have lots of support from the government in Turkey, which is excellent. And, um, and so, so they were actually hosted by uh, President uh, Erdogan, uh, in regards to their, you know, their general assembly, and Abu Hafsa was invited to go to Canada, and he went, alhamdulillah, and he got to meet him, which was awesome. We didn't, we it wasn't like that this time, of course, but we did. Uh, it's crazy, right? Because you go, you go to some place, you don't expect to be invited by the mayor to go sit in their office and meet them and have tea and do a presentation. Subhanallah, you know, and um, it, it's subhanallah, it's it's beautiful to see such, uh, such support from a Muslim government on something that most Muslims and, and all, to be perfectly blunt, really don't even think about, don't even care about, 
you know, don't even acknowledge as an issue. So uh, that's something that's that's you know yeah. very it, it, you know it warms the heart and it makes you it makes you have faith <laughs> in in people when you see things like that right. Alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Well, we have with us Mashallah in here, uh, Sister Medina Dawa. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. So when you mentioned the book. I immediately went to Amazon because I'm like, okay, what is this book actually about? Like, let me, because you said you weren't quite sure. You'd only, you know, heard. Yeah, we just heard like anecdotal evidence. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to go to the source. If you know my husband, you would know that that's just kind of what we do. So. Hey, good um, move. Go for it. Thanks. 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 I try. So um, the if you don't mind, I'll read off what the actual author of the yeah, book. There, you can also I present. Did. You can share the screen since you're on the panel. You oh, can mashallah. go to the. On the bottom, it says present. It has a plus on the computer sign. You click on that, and then you can share your screen, and I'll allow it or not. But read it because I can't see it anyway. So <laughs> Yeah, I'll read it. I'll read it. Okay, so um, I have highlighted the kind of what I think is important because if this is being read to children, um, the author did not intend that. It says this book is for anyone with questions, parents of gay kids and other LGBT youth or educators looking for advice about the LGBTQIA plus community. Nowhere does it say it's for kids. Like wow. nowhere. Wow. So that's the first thing I'll note is that the author said it's not for that. Yeah. So that's a basic argument that these parents in Dearborn could use. Um, but also children don't need to know <laughs> how to flirt. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't need something un an uncensored exploration of sexuality because uncensored. again, children oh, are not God. the intended audience. Wow. Um, and what it's like to, okay. So it says this candid, funny and uncensored exploration of sexuality and what it's like to grow up LGBTQ also includes real stories from people across the gender and sexual spe spectrums, not to mention hilarious illustrations. You will be entertained. So this is a book for entertainment. Mm -hmm. You will be informed. It's for information. But most importantly, you will know that however you identify or don't and whomever you love, you are exceptional. You matter. And so does this book. Um, OK, so <laughs> um, for, at the beginning, it also says inside you'll find the answers to all the questions you ever wanted to ask with topics like stereotypes, fact and fiction coming out, where to meet people like you, the ins and out, outs of gay sex. God. stereotypes the facts and fiction how to flirt so this is a very uncensored book which was originally as you can see not intended for children mm -hmm. this book is for children is nowhere on this so minimally the author's intention is not as an educational book for children it's as an educational book for adults mm. now you they could, they could argue that it's it, they the children would fall under anyone with questions mm-hmm but those are questions for parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not not to be read in the classroom. Did you say what age kids this is? This is elementary school. Okay. This so is, like, I mean, I'm I believe third, it's like, in high school too, grader. but it's in elementary school. Yeah, you're talking third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you know what I mean? Things like that. Like they want this in the school library. You, you I mean, I went to public school. I don't know who else went to public school, but you know, you could just go to the school library and pull out a book. No problem. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what that's that's where these books were. It's not like it's not like they were being in people's faces, but they were in the school library. Right. Right. Anyone could just pull this book out and read it. So the question is, is this like in the library or is this like a part of the intended part of the curriculum? That's in the a... library. It was in the okay. library. Right. Okay. But but we like uh, like I'm from New Jersey. Right. I live in Texas now, but I'm from New Jersey. Uh, one big issue in New Jersey is now part of the curriculum is you need to know LGBTQ history, LGBTQ, uh, what they what, what LGBTQ people added to society, you know, who the alphabet mafia put a hit on last week, you know, things like that. <laughs> you know, this right. this it's part of the curriculum. So when it's a part of the curriculum and they and as I mentioned, you know, they're they're they put in it, they're putting it in all pop culture that kids love like uh like i mentioned muppet babies not too long ago that my daughter actually likes to watch and i walked into stupid you know cross-dressing gonzo um 
you know, whenever they have these things, what do you, you know, this is, this is what leads to it. I mean, you see clips, uh, you can, you could very easily just find clips of teachers very outwardly saying I'm trans, I'm gay, I'm this, I'm that, you know? So whenever you have all of this just widely open and spoken about in places where it shouldn't be spoken about, it's going to pique curiosity and very easily a teacher can be like, Hey, if you want to learn more about this, here's this book. Well, and my thing is like my kids go to public school mm -hmm. and it, they have permission slips for sex ed. You can opt your child out mm -hmm. of sex ed. So I feel as though if something like this was in the school library, that it would require parental permission to check it out. That's their argument, though. Right. That's their whole argument. Either get it out or make sure it's something that's under lock and key that needs parental permission. Right. But but I can I can definitely confirm that there are you know there are mandates in school like you know just like uh you know where, where let's say a child chooses to go by different pronouns they won't use that whenever they call the home they'll call the kid by whatever p the name the parent wants them to call them by but in school they'll call them whatever the kid wants them to call them uh whatever pronouns they want to, the child wants to use you understand what i'm saying Mm. It, but it, it's like it, it's like where do you draw the line? Because like Khalil's parents, the district, the school district that they live in, mm -hmm. um, they're talking about this is it's so ridiculous. I feel silly saying it because no, it's literally it, just ridiculous. You know, it's they're true. talking about putting litter boxes. Yes, for kids to use who identify as cats. <laughs> you can't see the look on my face, but I'm like, what in the world? You know, like, you know, I called my mother, my mother-in-law right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mama, is this true? She's going to tell you that it's true. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes, okay, well, where do we draw the line? You know, there, like. There is no line. That's the thing. There is no line. <laughs> the line doesn't exist, yeah. right? Next, we need fire hydrants for the <laughs> Kids I'm telling the dogs. you, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you, man. Like, I'm, I want, I really want to test this theory, right? I really want to go to some legitimate professional mm -hmm. setting that is like super liberal, and they were like, you know, what's your pronouns? And I just want to put down Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's my pronoun. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I want to see, like, will they call me the rattlesnake? You know, will they call me? <laughs> <laughs> like what, what, where do we take this? Like, like, for example, like say I decide, okay, I don't want to pay my taxes anymore. And then the IRS comes call and say, I identify as a taxpayer. Yeah. I mean, really? Like, exactly. why are you going to draw a line here and not there? Like we've already have people who are claiming to be different race. Yeah. Okay. What is this going to do for anyone who is part of any movement to get social justice for race or anything? Like if anyone mm. can, like a, a group of KKK people can go into any place they want that is, you know, blacks and say, oh, we, 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 today we see ourselves as, as African American. And mm -hmm. I mean, you could see so much going wrong with this, this, uh, you know, this idiocy. I mean, it's it's to the point to whereas it, it, it's like, like I said, logic is just thrown out the window. There is no logical conclusion to this. To whereas, uh, like in, in that, in that documentary, what is a woman, right? And like, you know, we don't agree with the daily wire and what they usually espouse, especially when it comes to Muslims and, yeah. Uh, you know, their Zionism, right? We don't agree with that at all. But as mentioned earlier in the in the stream, we do align way more with the right, with the conservative right, than we do the progressive left. And uh, one thing is he actually interviewed a trans dude, a dude that thinks he's a woman, um, that does surgeries, right? That does, Over 2,000 you know, surgeries. Yeah, and and he asked... He asked him, he's like, what about those from the trans disabled community? And the person was like, what do you mean? It's like, well, let's say there's a guy and he identifies with the fact that he shouldn't have an arm. Would you, you know, provide him that service of removing his arm because he feels like he should be disabled? And the trans doctor was like, oh, I, I call those people kooky. Those people are strange. They have a mental disorder. Actually, that's a thing. Yeah, no, I know. I know that's a thing. Body extreme body modification is yes. actually a thing. Yeah. No, but but th but there's there's no there is no um what's the word here? Like the hypocrisy is outrageous. What what's the word, man? Like it, it's it's an oxymoron. Like why do you think it's okay for you to transition from a dude to a, a female, 
and but whenever a person that feels that they shouldn't have this arm or someone who feels that they should be blind they want their eyes plucked out of their face you know why why do you think that they're crazy you know th that's the thing and he asked he asked the trans doctors like you don't see the irony in that <laughs> And she was like, huh? She, she, she don't call her she, bro. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. He, sorry. He, <laughs> don't he, call he didn't get it. He didn't don't. get it. I'm, right here. Here's an article about new research shows there's a good reason why some people want to cut off their healthy arms and legs. Mm -hmm. And it, it's an actual, it's, uh, it's uh, xenomelia. Okay. It says they don't usually disclose their symptoms even to their doctors. This condition, also known as body integrity identity disorder, wow. causes. But see, here's the deal. It's still classified as a disorder. And this is exactly what trans were considered up until the last decade or so, even in the mental health book, which is called the, uh, I forget what the name of it is. DSM. DSM. DSM, yeah. Right? It was in there. It was a disorder. Somebody who wants to cut off any body part, what is the difference between cutting off an arm and cutting off your, you Privates. know what? Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it, there's no difference. You're still cutting off your body parts. This is a disorder to... To do this, perfectly healthy limbs amputated. Aware but of I how think, unusual I, that request would seem to a doctor, people feeling it usually keep it to themselves. Um, so they're saying that the medical history of xenomelia is meager, uh, but a paper published this month, research summarized that all the scientific literature they could find on it, which turned out to be just 11 papers. Um, they were just single case studies, so on and so forth. Um, so they're just talking about how they're trying to Talk about it more, I guess. There's yeah. a lesson in compassion for this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but see, the hardware problem. The brain is hardware. The mind is software. Nasrullah says, well, this is what a Muslim looks like. The number one job of the brain is to create the mind. Any changes to the physical structure of the brain may change the mind as a result. And so they're talking about how this is an issue with the brain, right? Something is going on with their brain that yeah. is wrong. And we're no longer allowed to talk about this situation, LGBT, as a mental disorder, right? Which it, you know, it is. It is something that is a mental disorder. Uh, we got Manny. Uh, disorder, right? Manny Friday. Welcome, Manny. Give us a little bit about your background. Can you uh, shut yeah. off your YouTube while you have StreamYard? Yeah, turn your uh, speakers off or put headphones in. Uh, While he's doing that, can I? Yes, like, I was going to say, yes, uh, I want to ask you a few questions, sister. Um, okay. First of all, uh, I don't want to forget where I am, but I do want to kind of go back to basics, though. Tell us a little bit about your name is Medina Dawa. What's the Dawa that you do? Tell us a little bit about you. Um, well, my husband is Khalil Ala. Oh, um, that's your. Oh, OK. It makes <laughs> sense now. Oh, my God. Jazakal Khair for the you did my my uh, thumbnail for me, didn't you? Just earlier? Yeah, he, he, did. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. OK, I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Um, he Yeah. <laughs> friendly was like, well, here's. Here's the stuff. Here's the other stuff. You got five minutes. Whip it up, buddy. Like, <laughs> well, I, really, I didn't um, put that hard of it. That was funny. Yeah, no, but it, was yeah like, so that, that's my husband. Um, so it just kind of to mostly identify us as a couple. But I do have my own channel um, where I'd like to talk. Faith integrates with like real life situations like it's 3 p.m. And my kid's been puking on me all day. How do I maintain my wudu to get my prayers in? Like things mm. like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Or. Um, you know, I've been thinking about wearing hijab, but you know, this hurdle, that hurdle, I fear for my safety or whatever it is. Um, I like to talk about things that are real life. Um, so this is kind of like right up my alley. I actually wrote my senior thesis in Christian high school on this topic. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Are so, you a convert born Muslim or, uh, yeah, no, I was, um, I won't, I won't say born Christian, um, but I yeah. was baptized yeah. as a baby um, in the Methodist church. And then um, I went to Christian school K through 12. Um, any any event that church or school was doing, like I was there. So I was in church like 10 times a week <laughs> between wow. school and actual church. Um, I was a camp counselor, camper, um, youth retreats as a leader and a student. Um, and I went to Cedarville University, which is a Christian college in the Midwest, to study youth ministry and Christian education, um, because even though women can't become pastors, um, they can become pastor's wives. And so as such, that was my goal. I was looking more for my MRS degree than anything. And uh, that's the Mrs. Cool. degree. I was looking for a husband. Yeah, we, I, yeah. um, and so, and so um, funny enough, enough, we get it. Well, it's, it's kind of cool because Allah like turned it into um, 
you know, I did end up marrying uh, someone who spreads truth. So Allah Akbar, that Allah. was really exciting. May Allah make you both the coolness of each other's eyes and reunite Amen. you in Jannah as Amen. one of the happiest couples. I mean, Allahumma And all of Amen. us with our wives. All of us who do this work for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, real quick. I got to go, uh, at least for now. Uh, I got to go for a sec. But uh, if That's I come okay. back, inshallah. I'll yeah, we'll be on for a for bit. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, no problem. All right, come guys. Back, uh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, so yeah. what were you going to say? Yeah, Are you going to talk about solutions? What are some solutions? Is that? Um, well, okay. So I have a few and um, just hear me out. Do y'all have kids? Do you have kids? Um, how many do I have or how many did I make? Because those are two different numbers. Okay. How many? He had four. I have four. So we have eight total. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's six boys and two girls. Oh, wait, so, yeah, yeah, it's about total. Eight so, I mean, you, 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 you put your kids, you said, in public school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to so, count my kids. I couldn't count my kids. So, that's so. Because, so, wait, so well, well, like, so awesome. welcome, brother. Mashallah. I smile every time I see that perfect hair. I don't, you got to tell me how you do your hair. I mean, I'm balding here. Is there anything I can do to, you know, get a, get a nice hairstyle just like your partner? Well, I was going to speak um, to that um, as far as solutions go. <laughs> Fortunately, I got, I got, you know, EA Dow makes sure, uh, you know, it's always looking good uh, and, and the trim is in, in check. And, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I did tell him. It is an inside joke, brothers and sisters, you know, that, you know, sometimes the friendly Muslim needs a thumbnail. So uh, uh, Khalil, a.k.a. EA Dow, also known as the machine, you know, uh, <laughs> Um, except uh, short, shortness or, or short orders uh, in in a in a way that's best. So uh, in a jiffy, yeah, even in, though, like in a jiffy. <laughs> so yeah, welcome, alhamdulillah. But sister, so yeah, so you so you do send your kids there. What I mean, how do you prepare your children, your kids? I'm sure that some of them are a little bit older than others. Yeah. With that many, you know, how do you prepare your kids? for being able to deal with this kind of stuff because in case sure. they're not even being uh, exposed to it on here's this book you got to read this book but they're going to have kids around them who are going to be you know homosexual yeah. who are transgender they're going to see things how are they prepared what, what what are your solutions to that in your home so i've got a couple the very first one is from the time they were very little i've always there's no shame in islam alhamdulillah so alhamdulillah. we're very open and honest with the right terms for the right things and we're very open and honest about you have this, this makes you a boy. You have this, this makes you a girl. You all have that. So you're all boys. <laughs> Mommy does not have that. So I'm a girl. It's very frank conversations. And that's also for their protection, right? Because should something, God forbid, happen, you know, to any child, if they cannot properly identify the part with the anatomical term, you lose the ability to prosecute. Yeah. So it's very important for safety reasons, first and foremost, and then also understanding. So um, my children all are familiar with um, they know what happens, why mommy can't pray once a month. Um, they all understand that and um, they all understand the physiology of it. Now, some people might think that I'm too open with my kids a little bit too early and that's fine. You don't have to do the things the way I do them. Um but that to say, when they came home from school, like you're asking, and there was um, a classmate <clears throat> with two mommies, but one of the mommies used to be their daddy, and now they're their mommy. So my kids were like, Mom, what, like, what, what is that? <laughs> wow. And I said, well, sometimes people feel, this is how I'm explaining this, by the way, the ages of my kids in this explanation. They're nine, seven, and six. So the four-year-old doesn't go to the same school, not included. Nine, seven, and six. Sometimes people feel like God gave them the wrong body. So the body like they feel like they are, they pretend to be as, or they dress themselves as to make them feel better. But what it really is, is they are uncomfortable in the body that God gave them. And that's why it's so important that you understand your body and that you love your body the way God gave it to you. Very easy conversation. It's literally, we have to talk to kids. The kids are not dumb. <laughs> like, kids no, are no. not dumb. We, 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 we treat them like they are. People treat them like they are, unfortunately. Yeah. No, kids are not dumb. What is a man? What is a woman? I 
am so thankful for Islam for this. If this question is for me, I'll answer it. Um, Islam gives us what these roles, responsibilities are, and assumedly for biologically matching individuals. So what I mean is if you are physiologically a man, then you have specific roles and responsibilities in Islam. If you are physiologically a woman, you have certain roles and responsibilities in Islam. Those are what make a man and a woman. Uh, and as far as my opinion goes, your physio your physiology is just a part of that. It, and I don't, you know, you were earlier talking about this body mod stuff. And like, I want to be careful in the way that we talk to people, not because I'm a snowflake or I want to, I, I care too much about people's feelings or I don't want to stand up for what's right. But I do think that it's important to keep the door for discussing Islam open. So for me, I just keep it simple. I say they. For me, this is me. I'm not telling anybody else what to do. Now, Khalil will tell you. He'll say he or she, and that's it. Whatever it is, that's that's it, right? For me, I like to keep the door to Islam open. And if I intentionally misgender somebody based on what they feel their gender is, they're not going to talk to me. They're not going to hear what I have to say. And maybe, maybe that's the way to do it. But I just feel like if I'm the representation representation of a law to someone, I want to temper the truth with kindness. And the easiest non-committal way to do that is to keep the pronoun gender neutral. That's me. That's not my husband. That's not his view. Um, we do differ in that, but it's it all comes down to when it comes to our kids, since that's the primary thing here, explaining that you can be kind. And know the truth and understand the truth of what the matter is, if that makes sense. And I know people are going to disagree with me and that's totally okay. Feel free. I know that that is like the they thing is not popular and that's okay. Um, I just don't see the need to intentionally, since if it is a mental disorder, right? If that's what we're claiming it is. If it is a mental disorder, you don't... Um, well, there's, there's two schools of thought, right? Do you entertain the delusion? Or if someone, for example, is night walking, do you just protect them around what they could possibly do to harm themselves? If I intentionally misgender someone, could they go home and commit suicide or self-harm? Like, it is that serious. And, and that's why books like this do exist, because there are people who have been killing themselves for years. So many trans kids commit suicide. So I think as a Muslim community... The solution has to be, how do we protect our own kids from this? Because God forbid our kids be one of them. I think that there's a balance. It comes, it has to be a balance, but I think it comes from that, like the article you said, by nurturing the mind into understanding how Allah made them, their roles and responsibilities, and fostering the truth in our children. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, sister. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I get where you're coming from. And I guess, I mean, that would be better than, yeah, than, than actually agreeing with him. And they say, oh, I'm a he, but yet they are biologically a woman. And then you say he, it is better to, you know, if you want to say they, um, I guess that's kind of, it's being like neutral. No, I mm -hmm. do get that. Uh, yeah. well, and, and actually I have had, uh, though, with uh, Islam chat, brother Samir, who was on earlier, mashallah, may Allah bless him. Um, I'm sure he has seen it too. I've I've had transgender people, people who have, actually completely done the surgery and the hormone therapy and gone the other direction and they go and back they come, right and they've come to well, they've come to islam no they've come to islam and so they ask they ask questions on well what do we do now do i continue being a woman and you know the and this is and i tell them like this is something that is for like people of proper knowledge today to tell them and then i give them the the, the teachers and the shuk and their opinions um that i have today and the, the most dominant opinion is that you um, are in a new category, but you have to do all of the fiqhi things like privately with what you were born as. But when it comes to going to the masjid, if you did become someone who looks like a woman, you still cannot pray with the men. Even if you were born a man, you're going to have to have all of the rights and responsibilities of a man, even though you cut, you know, you had the surgery, you did all this stuff, but you now, unless you actually make the surgery to go back, and make your body take like testosterone and actually have hair again and this stuff, you are not allowed to be praying with the men. 
Um, so it's it's kind of like a mix. But and this is stuff that you need you do need to talk to a scholar with for anyone who yeah. is transgender and they're asking about it. And and at the end of the day, look, and I tell them they're like, you know, how is it? I say, look, it's don't be afraid of anything like about what anyone's going to say, because anything that you did before Islam, it's completely like wiped out. And so, you know, yes, we do think that this is something that's, you know, it's stranger than someone who was an alcoholic before they became a Muslim. It's even stranger than someone. If someone became a murderer and they became a Muslim, it's easier for Muslims to accept them than it is for them to accept somebody who is transgender. And that's we have to be open about that. We understand it because this is something that's in your face. You're seeing it constantly. You're not you're, you can't hide it. Right. It's, it's something that's like right there. So we do know that this is going to be a test. But as such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested everybody with something right and so this is your test like there was a guy exactly. here who he wasn't trans but he was a um he was a homosexual for very many years and he actually had aids he had contracted aids but he moved to medina uh, he converted to islam and moved to medina after he was diagnosed with aids and he he he, he it was very beautiful what he used to tell people he's like look he's like you know what i used to do all this stuff and, you know, I was he was very like he was one of those people like San Francisco type where they'd go to the marches there with many partners a year, that kind of stuff. And he's like, look, Allah forgave me, but I still have to deal with the consequences of what I did before Islam. It doesn't just automatically fix it. And my HIV is gone. He's like, I still have to live with it. And he ended up dying from AIDS right here in, 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 in Medina. I mean, what a blessed way, place to die in. Right. That's, you know, the, the Prophet Islam said anyone who can, he said, if you can die in Medina. Because I will make ex an extra shafa'a for you on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. And so, you know, anybody with any background, it doesn't matter. You can still come to Islam. And we're still going to talk to you normally, you know. But I, I do, I personally talk to them. I ask them, I say, what was your birth gender? I ask them. And then I tell them, like, this is what, this is what Allah is considering you as. I'm not saying, I'm not even talking about what I'm calling them. I talk, I say, you, what's your name? They'll tell me their name. I call them by their name. I don't even like to use any pronouns, really, like they or he because I'm talking to them personally. So when I talk to them personally, I use you and, you know, their name. So um, yeah. that's that's that. And I do, if I can, I would like to clarify um, a comment in the chat. I want to make sure that I did not come across as saying that Allah gave them the wrong body, but that these people, because of what's going on in their mind, felt as though they had the wrong body. That's mm -hmm. not reality. But I yeah. just I wanted to clarify that difference because someone was like Allah, you know, does not make mistakes, and I wasn't saying that. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know, think I, I want to make that clear. Yeah. So, uh, welcome, uh, Manny Fratty. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Is that uh, how are you doing today? Waalaikum salam, rahmatullah. Waalaikum salam. It's going very good. Uh, um, this topic, uh, I don't have many to say. Uh, as I'm not from a uh, country dominated by liberals, uh, I'm from a small country, a very conservative, small country. And the thing is, I really didn't know much uh, about this topic before I started using the internet. And one thing I realized is now I'm 20 years old. And when I was 8, 10, 12, I used to dress as a girl, like I used to take my sister's dresses, high heels, uh, this stuff like that. And it was normal. No one was saying to me like you, like you are a girl or girly or anything like that. And I just grew out of it like many people did before the 2000s and so on. And what I see now is when kids behave like that, like when a kid um, plays with Barbie dolls or things like that, um, parents um, like to through to signal maybe and think like they they child is somewhat being born in the wrong um, kind of body, and something that hit me um, very much is that there is a, a Reddit community um, that's called Deterrence and people there are people who used to be turns and then really hit the wall and and everything became a day and night to them. And one thing is,
um, this community is riddled with um, lies and gatekeeping. And if you have a bad um, experience, that's because of you and not because of like what you, the bad that you have taken. And there's something that is like a very grim um, when uh, people do all this stuff, um, like the surgery and all this, there is uh, something that I, I really shocked to know. Like somebody said um, they did the surgery and everything and really they needed to do like something called dilation because this is like something of a wound and the place wanted to heal and everything and this person has to do dilation has to sometimes laser the hair that's going inside and all this stuff and we will go into depression Ireland depression all, all this stuff and really um there was a study that shows uh, a lot of people even when they do this um thing this um, transition and the surgeries they end up uh, a big junk number of uh, of the people that do that end up in a uh, in suicide because what the community is promising isn't there anymore because what left is a lifetime of challenge a lifetime of medical um, challenge that's never going away and even people who do this aren't going to uh, make like hormones like testosterone of their own because they like the uh, parts that used to make it so what I see is um, we know kids are very stupid, like we were all kids at some point, and kids make uh, um, very stupid decisions, and everyone knows that, um, but when a kid declares they are uh, a different kind of gender, and everyone is supposed to be blind and catering and supporting that kind of uh, claim, and this is really very worrying if be able to think about so there's uh, and by the way i think um where i came from um uh, really um a woman a man um it, it really isn't something like uh like uh, an identity like um everyone is judged by their and uh, sex biological sex and what uh i really I can't understand how someone um, feels in their like in their brain. Like I'm man, uh, I have a male body, and that's it. I'm not when I'm alone and uh, not thinking about anything. I'm not like constantly be reminded that I'm a man or anything. I'm I'm just not thinking about it. So um, I think um, who's man, who's woman. Sex determines. That's my point. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for that, brother uh, Manny. May Allah bless you and give us a deep understanding and allow us to, you know, be the, the be the best we can with teaching our kids, Absolutely. you know, how to deal with this stuff and how we ourselves should deal with this in the best way. Absolutely. Thank, so, thank you. you, brother. Thank you too. All right, now we've got uh, in the. Uh, you want to bring EA up? Come on, baby. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm right here. Salam alaikum. Well, alaykum salam. Take a seat. We've got someone waiting in the backstage, so I'm going to bring oh, you Oh, just up. for you. Okay. It's a okay. present. That's for here you. <laughs> oh. Welcome. This is Oh, Wes my gosh. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why Friendly was saying maybe not because well, we, yeah. have, we have history. Yeah, this All guy. right. Well, I'm going to. I mean, uh, you can give him a chance if you want, brother. He's going to talk about money and how money is like imprinted in your wrist and it's the mark of the beast and you know, all this other stuff. Well, we're going to keep it on topic. We're talking about current events. We're talking about what's going on in Dearborn. Uh, he can talk about the topic if he wants. If not, we'll we'll get some other people. And if he wants to convert to Islam, then we will be more than happy to get him. 
Welcome, Wesley. I can't hear you. Are you talking or are you telepathing right now? What's going on? <laughs> That's funny. Um, hi. Yeah, my name is Wesley. How's everybody doing? Uh, well, alhamdulillah. Hey, We're doing good, man. We've having a good stream so far, having a lot of wonderful uh, guests talking about the, the unfortunate events going on in Dearborn. And we've got some more news and topics to come up here pretty soon. So, um, yeah, we're doing great. I heard somebody about the male-female thing say this. Um, after a person dies and is, you know, pretty much buried in the ground or, you know, until they become the bones, uh, were an anthropologist to come 100 years later and look at the bones of a person, they could tell you right away whether they were a man or a woman. So the imagination is really childish uh, and silly about, you know, about that transgender thing. It's just a very silly, childish thing. And uh, Yeah, now that, that's unfortunately people are childish with lots of things, not just with the LGBTQ. They're also they also have that same kind of mentality when it even comes to, uh, you know, things that are even more important than that, too. So. Well, you know, it's pleasure seekers is what that is. And, oh. um, you know, that's all I have to say about that. Let me listen to what you guys else are going to topic on see if I have anything worth saying. And if I don't, I'll just be quiet. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. So first of all, uh, now we're moving on to the most amazing, most beautiful news that we have, you know, we could get. Alhamdulillah, everybody who's listening, you know, everyone knows what I'm about to bring up and what I'm talking about. It's been in the news on everybody's screens everywhere constantly the last two days. Um, and But today we are going to talk about how somebody who has kind of gained a following with the Muslim community, but has kind of been, you know, arm's length, you know, kind of like playing, flirting with it. Alhamdulillah has finally accepted Islam. This is the most Googled, the largest social media influencer today before, it, you know, at this moment, the most Googled person, the most searched about person right now um, on the face of the earth. And that is... Uh, Andrew Tate, who has, alhamdulillah, just converted to Islam. So we're, we're excited for him. Anyone who isn't aware, um, you know, it is something that happened just a couple of days ago after he was, uh, he was seen praying in a masjid in, in Dubai. And this video went viral because people were asking. And basically the next day he admitted that, yes, I have uh, converted to Islam. He said, this is why I'm Muslim. Um, and he, he put why. He says, this is why I'm Muslim. Any Christian who believes in good and understands the true battle against evil must convert. So be patient. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. Quran, verse 30, Surah 30, verse 60. So what were you saying, uh, Medina? I just said, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. What are you, friendly Muslim, uh, you haven't been talking for a while. How, what do you think about what just happened? Yeah, I mean, we just did a, a stream on um, his move to Islam, and you know, there were different opinions on it as such. Um, you know, and so we're looking at him a chance to make sure that he is following the way um, and not giving out the wrong information. Um, and so I, I think Jordan M made a good post where he said we shouldn't elevate as a leader in islam you know or look at the past either right now we should you know welcome him in um and be monitoring how his this move into islam takes him um you know and ensuring he has good people uh, around him um that know and understand islam um and the real meaning of islam so yeah, I think mean, that's a, a neutral position where we should uh, sort of be, um, and we shouldn't elevate someone straight away uh, coming in and, and taking guidance, um, etc. From uh, from that position. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be my, my my stance on on it as as it stands at the moment. And so far, the things coming out seem positive. With he's in, I, I believe it's in Dubai at the moment. Um, yeah and having conversations, um, you know, that seemed very respectful, um, as it should be, inshallah. 
Well, I, I put here the the uh, the hadith, which is the narration from the Prophet Muhammad on uh, what what's the situation? Because you mentioned, you know, just a second ago about what happens to a person um, who is, you know, he has a past. And you're saying maybe, you know, we shouldn't, you know, Jordan M made a good point that we don't elevate him as a leader because why he could maybe say a lot of things that could misguide people because he doesn't have knowledge yet. But we also don't put him down saying, well, he's a Muslim, but look at what all he did in, a, in his past, which is what a lot of liberals are and munafiqin, you know, from amongst the Muslim ranks are saying, right? There, there may be, there, people are even saying, we don't want him as a Muslim, blah, 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 like stuck for Allah, this kind of stuff. But what does the Prophet Muhammad say? Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, um, one of the companions, narrated that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, when a servant embraces Islam and practices his Islam well, Allah will record every good deed and erase every bad deed that he did prior to it. Thereafter, he will be held accountable. A good will be counted as ten like it, up to seven hundred times. An evil deed will be counted as one like it, unless Allah Almighty overlooks it. So, look at the mercy. First of all, everything's forgiven by Allah's will. Bifadlillah, by the mercy and the, the grace of our Creator, who nobody forgives sins, illahu, except for Him. right? And then even then, He says, and if you do good, then the, those good deeds will be raised as 10. For each one you do, he'll multiply it by 10 up to 700 times. But if you do a bad deed after that, it's only recorded as one, if it's even recorded, because Allah could just forgive it. SubhanAllah. And this is Sahih uh, from Sunan and Nisa'i. So, you know, what uh, Maliki click. Assalamu alaikum. What do you think about that? We're going to get Wesley's take here as well. In a sure. Second. Every time I ever sinned against God, and his name's Jesus, he allowed my soul to be burned into a piece of ash. Uh, to him, his eyes, I looked like a body in the shape of a man that was dead gray color, ashes from head to toe. And those ashes are the wages of sin. Their word for them is death or the shadow of death or the spirit of sleep. And, you know, Jesus said it is time, and Satan said sad and delicious. And Jesus said, tell the vision, and Satan said, don't tell it. And Jesus said, tell the vision, you shall heal without money. And Satan said, I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. And, you know, when I would sin, when I would do evil, where, and I have where done is this evil, recorded? Where's the evidence for this? His children Dude. recognize his voice. Dude, um, trust I, me. That's my source, dude. Trust me. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm serious. Anyway, you gotta, you gotta, sin, you gotta come you, with Bible verses, baby. You gotta whenever come with Bible I verses sin, over here. whenever sure, Jesus, would you send three angels to each of those houses to speak the words that I speak that are your Bible? So whenever I would sin, part of my soul would become ashes, weak, powerless, sleep-like, and I did see my soul and. All of my sins over the years had accumulated where I was nothing but a body of ashes from head to toe with the Holy Spirit of Jesus in the bowels. And it looked like a, a, a pearl, a very large pearl. And it was Wesley. the color of snow. So that's Wesley. what happened to me whenever, even though I said I was baptized, you know, it, 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 the truth was I was all lip service to Jesus. And the fact is, I had burned, my wicked ways had turned my soul into dead gray ashes. Wesley, you made a point earlier about how, you know, and that's why I purposely asked you about what do you think about this LGBT community? And you said that it's just, it's silliness and nonsense. And unfortunately, what I'm hearing from you is, is something that I, I don't, I don't even understand what you're talking about. Like I completely have already lost you. Um, and I, I really don't, I don't know where you're getting this from. Where's your sources? Like you can't just anybody can come up and just start saying anything. That's the and that's the problem that we have with the LGBT community is that they're just coming and anyone is saying they're a, a, a boy is a girl. People are saying they're cats, as Sister Medina said earlier. In some elementary schools, they're going to start bringing sure. litter boxes for little kids who want to be cats, and then they're going to pee in the litter boxes in front of everybody. Like, well, my proof, my proof is actually reality that my words are reality on this about spiritual matters. But these and people, are, they're, 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 those, two, they're have their words too. How are your words more real than their words? How are, just My words are words. as real as two healed teeth that I asked Jesus to give each of your mouths. That, that doesn't make any sense. 
That doesn't make any sense. Well, had Allah done it, you would have told. No. People can ask for things and not be given them in this life, even from Jesus. People I know all the time ask Jesus for things that don't get it. Yeah, so. but I have angels telling what I say. I don't hear them saying any of this. That's yours. called schizophrenia. That, well, it's not just that. It could be gin. It could also be gin. It doesn't have to be schizophrenia. It, it, it's very Angels likely. touch each of them on their okay, shoulders. Okay, twice, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I, listen, I've never met you before, Wesley, but um, are we on any? Are you on any medications that we need to be made aware of? I'm on. I'm asking honestly. I'm not joking here. No, of course not. Of course not. But the angels just tapped you on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm this talking why, about this reality. Is why, this is why. No, you're, 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 not, you're, not, you're not talking about. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I warned you, you're not Cowboy. talking. You're not talking about reality. You're talking about. You, bro, did you hear what you just said? An angel just tapped sure. me on my shoulder. Jesus, you would hear you tap what? each of them in their mouth two times, please? You're going to feel a little <laughs> tap in your mouth twice. You really don't exactly. use your mouth for reality, young man. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. That, I, I don't know either. I, you were, I, I, what stream Muslim, did I jump into, bro? <laughs> myself, a friendly Muslim well, warned not, me, but I, had, I, I didn't know what I was getting not into. Not just you, everybody on earth. Mm. Oh, wow. Mashallah. This is, so, guys, go ahead. everybody go ahead who's, and, who's... Go who's, ahead and uh, do that. So, go ahead so hold on. Do that. Hold, Look, hold guys, on. this hold is... On. Exactly why I became Muslim. Just wanted to throw that out there. Say that again. Alhamdulillah. Hey, if, if you want to worship a, a, a decapitated frog head with an Omni <laughs> tattoo and two fangs on its throat, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, look, I'm the one says, that asked Jesus to throw it off of your head. My man says he sees angels, right? Because that's uh, all. That frog head, the black one, is Allah. That's the Wait, only Allah black. that there is ever time been. Out, time out. Time if out. That's time what out. you want to pray to. More power. Okay. okay. Are, are you ha are you having a geriatric moment, or do you really believe this, bro? Tell me. He could just be trolling. <laughs> I think he's trolling. He could I think just you, be trolling, bro. Because I want to know. I want to. Can't be real. I, I want to ask him. I want to ask him. Okay. Sure. Where do you get this decapitated frog's head, bro? I got to know. What do you sure. get? Um, and out of the mouth of the dragon, the dragon is Satan, and out of the mouth of the beast, that's you, and out of the mouth of the false teacher, that's the fire that Satan pulled down from the sky, forcing your mind to think, don't tell the vision on March 31st in 2020. Now, out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false teacher, I did see an unclean spirit like a frog. And that's what happened. And that unclean spirit like a frog is Allah. And Wait, that's who you, you pray know that, to. So go how right do you ahead. know that that frog's name is, is, is Allah? <laughs> well, when I said fall off of them, Allah, I didn't say fall off of them, Darth Kermit. <laughs> hey, uh <clears throat> Wesley, I have a question for you since you want to talk about Allah in the Bible. Um, we, we as Muslims know, and by the way, I'm an ex-Christian 31 years ago. Um, we, we, know that in, we know in the Hebrew um, Bible that they called him Allah. If you look in Genesis, the very, very first ber uh, verse, they call him, in the beginning, Allah created. And it's written clean, clear as day, Allah and the Arabic Bible, the Christian Bible, by the way. So how could this Allah be a decapitated frog for the love of God? Hey, you're the one that prays to him. I don't. It wasn't hey, on yo, me. Hey, I was, wait a minute. I, but I'm talking about your Bible there. We're talking about your Bible, Wesley. No, you're not talking about my Bible. You're talking Jesus, about... You, hold on. So do you think that Jesus spoke English? Did Jesus speak English? You're asking strange questions. I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer <laughs> that. Well, about, look, I mean, Jesus, hey, wait a minute. A wait a minute. It's in English, right? Question. You're basing the on angel. something that you read in English. So, uh, so, you know, that's not the original language it was revealed in. So in one of the cousins of, you know, religion, original language of what Jesus spoke, Arabic, in that book, Arab Christians read the word Allah. 
constantly. Every Arab Jew and Arab Christian uses the word Allah, not Muslims. Well, so where'd you get this you know, headless um, frog from, bro? <laughs> you saw so it. So you're, ins you're insulting your other You have Christian eyes, but you do not see, and ears, but you do not hear. Well, I'm blind, bro, and I can see way better than you can, bro, because apparently Whoa, you're blind. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You know? You can see angels well, and stuff. I don't know what you're talking language. about, bro. So, yes, Jesus can speak English. He created language. I All right, so he's probably a Mormon. He probably thinks he Adam came. and Eve was born in Massachusetts what? or something. <laughs> yeah, what language did Jesus speak when he came? Did he come calling the name God? Did he come speaking English to his disciples? He was mostly speaking Hebrew and Aramaic, or all Hebrew, okay. all Hebrew. Right. And so in Hebrew, Eli and Aramaic, Allah. Look, look, what I'm trying the, to do is the to, same to help you. And, and Allah, I know bro. you don't want to face Wait a minute, it. Muslim cowboy. It. Hey, wait but a minute, you Muslim cowboy. You're, you're doing taqiyah, aren't you? Oh, you're doing oh, some you taqiyah. You caught me. <laughs> You, you actually know what they call this in Arabic? This is a taqiyah. It's called a taqiyah. So I'm doing a hat. some big taqiyah, baby. <laughs> Bro, and by the I way, an a, I, got, I got a real an, big taqiyah on. An angel just told me that you're full well, of it, bro. Jesus said to you, no time to talk, Allah. And he told you, you want war. Oh, mashallah. Did this also happen in your dream? Is this a it dream was or is November he seeing this right 21st, now? Jesus. November 21st, uh, not last November 21st, the year before that. Okay. <laughs> Angel, <laughs> and, and, and Angel just told me that he's full of it, man. I, I just got that. It's over. Right well, yeah. Jesus showed you that I'm going to be standing in Mecca and I'm going to be telling the vision that you won't tell, for it is the Holy Spirit in your belly and it's a clean part of you, but you don't want it. You want to. Inshallah, you are going to be in Mecca and you're going to be wearing the white rida with the izar. And you're going to be going around the Kaaba asking Allah to forgive you for all of these very sinful words that you're saying right now. Allahumma ameen. Jesus, Jesus showed you in a vision what I'm going to do to Mecca. Okay. All right. Sure. Jesus didn't show us anything. That's me. Bye. Peace out. And I'm going to walk away unharmed with the children. I speak to a Puerto Rican named Jesus. Does that mean I'm talking to Jesus too? I mean, I'm... <laughs> Allah guide him. Allah guide him. Subhanallah. Yo, that what, was, what uh, the hell did I walk into? Like, <laughs> yeah, you came back right at the. the <laughs> I was like, was, I was like, was let me bad. go pray Asa. Let me order some Indian food because me and my wife we really wanted some Indian food. And I was like, let me jump back on the stream while I wait for the food to come back. And I walk into my man saying uh, an angel just tapped everybody in the teeth or something. <laughs> well, angel tapping the shoulders. <laughs> Jesus tapped the sheets. Oh my God, bro. Miss Miss Nomad is saying. Uh, the pin is lifted for this man if yeah. he's not trolling. If he's not trolling, but if, if he's, he's not serious, trolling, yeah, yeah, this if guy he's is not crazy. Trolling, I mean, he really is majnoon. That for, yeah. for sure. If, if he he's not trolling, if, he if really trolling. listen. If if anyone that knows this guy is watching this, which or ever watches this, please get this man some serious help. If he's not trolling, like seriously, legitimately, he needs help. Bro brother, you know, you know when he came in and I said, "Hey, I'm out." Yeah, mm -hmm. Th that's exactly. Why. <laughs> Subhanallah. Well, we got some more guests down there below. Um, I'm going to continue sharing the link for anybody who's interested in coming. It is it is uh, pinned, everyone. So if you want to look at the top, it is pinned. But for those who I don't know it, I just re-put the link. So we've got Brother Snake Juice. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. How y'all doing? Alhamdulillah, man. We're doing good. Yeah. By the mercy and the <laughs> blessings of Allah. Yeah, yeah. Allah has, man. you know, that's one thing. We see stuff like this happen, and it makes you yeah. so grateful that Allah has given us a sound mind. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, man. That, that was, uh, I don't know, either that guy is sick, insane, or clinically retarded, or all of the above. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Inshallah, his pin is lifted. Inshallah, he'll get another chance we, uh, yeah. if he's not trolling. So yeah, yeah. Oh, so what's yeah, up, Rob? Good to see you guys, man. Me didn't too. know. Uh, didn't know you were streaming today. W w was this out of the blue or? Uh yeah 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 sure was. Those um, are the best. 
Well, not out of the blue, out of the blue. I mean, it was I was supposed to have another podcast with Wissam and Mahdi on the uh, the authority and authenticity of the Quran. Since we already did our video on why the Bible is completely inauthentic and unauthoritative, we don't want to just yeah. leave everyone who watched that hanging. So we're going to do a follow up and mashallah, it's going to be so amazing. But we, he had some extenuating circumstances come up, so we had to push it again. So it's going to be inshallah this week. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to redo my um, my schedule for it. So we'll look out for the schedule on my community tab, but it'll be mashallah amazing. So and he's got a lot of research that he's done into it. Um, so so EA, are you going to take over now? Khalil? Is it yeah, the wife's gonna do something, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna sit in the I'm gonna sit in the pink seat. Dude, All you right, can't do that. Fellow. You can't sit in the pink chair. Ta -da. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we've got somebody else in the back room. I'm gonna bring him up now. Uh, Maliki uh -oh. Click took off. If hey, if you're listening, Maliki, uh, come on back, brother. Um, inshallah, we wanna we wanna keep you up here. But if not, it's all good. Rob, Maliki, I miss you. Rob, oh, Rob. welcome, welcome. Oh. Sentinels Apologetics. I remember this guy from last week. Mashallah, welcome back. <laughs> I only joined because of that idiot. Id, how, what 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 word can I use? Um, I mean, we don't I'm know. He, he was trolling or, or, or he was legitimately something was wrong with him. So. I don't think words can suffice here. Yeah. No, it was. I was very embarrassed for Christians like you who who don't actually believe like he believes. So. Oh, I don't man. know, man. Some Christians uh, deem Rob a heretic, and they say that uh, <laughs> Rob's version of the Bible, quote unquote, is a heretical version. And yet, but then again, every Christian deems every other Christian a heretic, so it's not surprising. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's that is true. So, <laughs> so uh, Rob, so, we're talking about uh, the events going. I don't know if you're. Fam I mean, you are in Australia, so I don't know if you know what's going on in Dearborn, Michigan. But yeah. basically, uh, some cons like Christians and Muslims have been standing up to. The school board because there were some books uh placed on in the library oh yeah no that's right about yeah. um we're aware of it what's called, that looking uh, like what's that looking like in good. in australia how yeah how's the lgbt community there are you supporting of it do you go and it's not even just about the community like are they are they harassing everybody like if you don't fall in line you're the you're interesting bigot, thing is you're... yeah um no the interesting thing is i mean American politics and American culture, it, it is seeping in. Uh, I, I, and again, no offense to America, but I think America is just, I don't want to swear, but BS. It's okay. Like, I was going to say bat S crazy. Um, yeah, agreed. I, yeah. I just, <laughs> like, there's just a lot of, I mean, by the way, Australians have very, like, imaginative swear words believe it or not but uh, yeah, yeah i, well, I used to watch the uh, the chasers culture. war on everything so i i'm familiar yeah uh but uh yeah no it's just ranging from politics all the way to religion there's just a lot of crazy stuff that's come out of america and now we are entering into this new wave of like insanity that you don't find honestly you just don't find and in because i'm a european background sort of guy and you just don't find in in what I would like to call a higher education more in the West and also in the East, because I was born in Burma, like in between India and China, and 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 I, I have Asian friends as well, and um, I don't know. America's just this big mishmash of like, let's see what, let, let's just try and imagine something new, and then everyone just buys it, and then it just becomes this viral thing, and it's like it's hip for the moment, and yeah gone are the so-called golden days i suppose like any time anywhere between say the 50s up to maybe the 90s of of you know america and it's what it of, was able to of, achieve of the and american so on. western like, uh experiment experience yeah. really yeah like like music movies you know so, i mean you in know. in australia it's not like a hyper secularist environment you know what i mean like they're not pushing secularism because that's what this is all really founded off of right um subjective morality um secularism that's what this is all really based off of so in Philosoph Australia, yeah. philosophical liberalism sure because I because <laughs> the, the sad i mean i i have to be honest as a christian the sad truth is that you have the hyper literalist the hyper fundamentalist in america the reason why they existed is because of how splintered and fractured america was politically you have all the civil wars and all that stuff 
uh, the the reactions against the racism, the early racism, so the American Indians, um, and you know, then the Christian sort of engagement, how to like those Christians who actually were opposing that. Then there's a slavery issue again. Christians are opposing the slavery issue, and so then when you when you have this this community that's so fractured, then those who are in defense of what you and I would agree with become even more literal and more like like toxic believe it or not even though they they mean well but they become toxic and then those against those views they become their own toxic version and then it's just, it's just toxic versus toxic for the next 50 or so years and here we are. <coughs> so so bible belt american christians are woefully uneducated and those who are not religious uh because they're stemming from a family heritage mostly due to World War Two, where all the the father figures were killed off and then they're raised up without father figures and then you and then you know the hippie generation starts in the 60s and then um, you can well imagine the so-called soy boy mentality like the beta male mentality um, that kicks in and now you have effeminate men running around and so this isn't happening in Australia no <laughs> no, th there is because... there is secularism to an extent, though, in Australia. It, it is. Uh, I, there Rob, is, may not... I add uh, that not only do we live in a, in, a, in, a, in a, like an epoch of polarities or extreme polarities in every domain and in every arena, whether it's religion, politics, education, academia, whatever you want to call it. But um, it seems that uh, if, whether you want to call it karma or not, that the West, the power of the West, the empire of the West or America, at least being 243 years old, has been built upon the backs of uh, many dead people, many many dead um, many dead uh, countries, many graves, many people that suffered for America mm -hmm. to be where it's at right now, 243 years later. But it seems that um, things are biting us back in the in the arse. Chickens are coming <laughs> home to roost, bro. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and now so it's it's almost like a cultural PTSD. So not only do the soldiers suffer from this PTSD. But now, you know, <laughs> we're living in times of it, it seems like. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Hmm. It's just extremes, man. It's just yeah. absolute extremes. There is no... In, in everything. And, and it's, yeah. in, it's in every community, too. Yes. It's like, so, yeah, yeah. so the Muslims, you know, they see what's happening. And then they're, they're, some factions uh, split into extremes. Some of them want to go very traditional literalist. Or you either become a very extreme secular or whatever mm -hmm. so that's why you have you know some weird things coming out in the muslim world where female imams and stuff like that so it's either some people view it as oh you either do this or you do that even though islam is sirat al mustaqim is the, is the balanced path the middle path you know even buddhism middle path and i think rob would agree that the balanced middle path is is the path to uh, so, so what's on, your yeah. what's your opinion on this rob you know muslims and christians you know like like, listen, we disagree on, on this, but we agree on morality. So let's work together and try to save our children. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by I, the way, I, by the way, on that note, mm -hmm. in Dearborn, Michigan, that did happen. And I was very happy of it. Yeah, yeah. There's we the, we uh, showed Christian the clip in the beginning yeah, of the, yeah. we showed the news, uh, f the news about it in the beginning of the, of the stream. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Dope. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, I, I think, uh, so Australia is growing in its LGBT... Uh, I don't know, like the population, I suppose, of LGBT is growing, definitely. Australia is still a relatively small nation. Uh, I mean, the purple big, hairs, it's a big country, but it's a small, still small population size. They the the engagement with the LGBT is such that um, Australia is is actually of a higher. It still maintains a higher academic engagement with uh, with that uh, subculture. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, is that as far as like, say, your sports or your achievements and so on, there's no favoritism. You you have to prove yourself worthy um, in any of these fields of specialization uh, based on your own merits. And if you can perform, you can perform. Um, whereas that, you know, that American where it's like pretty much anything goes now. 
and plus the technology that America produces with respect to social media, the social media technology, again, how they just allow for anything, that anything can go. Uh, I think uh, not just religious people, but even, I, I know many atheist friends that are uh, heavily opposed to, um, you know, what was going on with that book. Um, you know, their reactions were such that it's it, it, it's like common sense. You don't, you don't, you don't introduce that to to kids, and there's even in, gay and there's yeah. even gay lesbian people, trans people, uh, all these people, all these all the all the even people you think would be that. pushing it. Even them, they're saying no. This yeah. this should not be put in front of children. Yeah. So it's logic. Yeah, it's, it's, you it's know. No yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, but yet you still had two people who went to go speak, like we saw in that that video, who were saying that. Oh, y'all aren't against the book. Y'all want to erase LGBT students and teachers. Like, <laughs> how do you get that? Why the mountain into a molehill? Like, why do you have to play this sensationalized? That's victimized the only argument bullcrap? they have. That's yeah, why. Yeah, exactly. They, they have, have to nothing make nothing else. They have to make it look like they're threatened so bad that therefore something has to be done. And this is very um, illustrative of another group who I won't mention their name who has to do this all the time to legitimize their status in that one little place over there in this part of the world my cousin right where i am <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i've um, i've seen i've seen because I, I live in perth so there's like a, a central in the in the main central area of the city there's like a whole district that's dedicated to say night clubbing and all you know the bars and the pubs and all that like san francisco and the yeah. village in the in the states Right. I, I don't know what you guys call it, but but over here, um, it, it's bustling Friday, Saturday night, especially now Halloween's around the corner. And and I and I remember once I was invited to, uh, this was actually a couple of months ago, I was invited to uh, a friend's 35th birthday, and there are two gay bars like 10 blocks down, and uh, <laughs> we parked just behind those two bars and we had to walk all the way to this uh this pub and uh while we we're passing by you, probably the the most dragest of all drag queens you could ever think of on like those stilts that are walking like the, to, to elevate their height Pr you know proudly just sort of demonstrating against the misuse of the of who they are which I found really interesting. It's like here's here's probably the weirdest looking, like no offense to any gay person listening to this, but just like you can tell that that guy is gay and just just the image. But at least he was still voicing something that is like, look, yes, I'm a complete minority. Yes, I had, I identify like this. But I'm not wanting to push what I am onto anyone else. At the end of the day, this is my life. I'm doing what I want to do. But as long as I'm not harming anyone or like forcing anything on anyone, that's kind of what surprised me was this attitude. And on a megaphone, this person was just, you know, like demonstrating. But unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's the whole. Uh, it goes back to the like. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. I was just gonna say, unfortunately, it's not. You don't really hear that. Or oh, that doesn't go viral, so to speak, on social media by the LGBT community, say, more so in the American context. And um, this is just one random dude just in a city district that's just doing that, and that's it. And it's it's falling on deaf ears is what I'm saying. And Yeah, so. yeah no, I completely get that. No, and it's uh, and, and the thing is, like I, like I was saying uh, earlier, way earlier in the beginning of the stream, it's not even about just living your normal life, wanting basic human rights. It's about wanting special treatment. You know, it's it's. Do you want to be just left alone so you can live your life, or do you want to be put on a pedestal? Do you want special treatment? Do you want us to take logic and things that make absolute sense to any normal human being? Do you want us to just take that and completely remove it from our brains and go along with your propaganda? Hmm. That's the question. Yeah, it's 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 the age of the blurring of the lines. There is no uh, there are no lines anymore. That's why the other day there was a guy dressed as a child identifying as a child at a playground, 
That's why there was a guy the other day identifying as a nine-year-old who went serious? to a kindergarten classroom. <laughs> oh, yeah, both were arrested. Oh, gosh. Um, no, now, I now they were arrested. Now, give it fifteen years. Give it ten years. Give <laughs> yeah, it five yeah. years. Forget and it's about funny because it. you know, going off Rob's, I think he was talking also about like basically my body, my choice. But it's funny how those people that hold that, i.e., the liberal secular left. Uh, don't hold that when it comes to vaccines, my body, my choice, right? So, well, if I don't want the vaccine, you know, they want to force that on you. But I think- yeah, uh, you, you probably saw that in Australia big time, Rob. Yeah, too, yeah. Yeah, but are you guys opposed to the vaccine or are you pro? Bro, I got all the I shots. Don't care. I, I don't I, care. I, I think personally. everybody should have a choice. Yeah, I think exactly. people should yeah, have a choice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Person. Like whether, yeah. Yeah. whether we dis disagree on this panel, because uh, I'm sure some of us do on whether we should get it or not, we all agree, though, that we should still have the choice and it shouldn't be forced on people. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I that because that's a tough one. Yeah. I'm well, Rob, you're, purely... you're probably going to bring up mentioning, you know, benefits, risks. Does it harm others? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Utilitarianism. But you're actually going to bring you're actually going to bring an argument as compared to no, you have to accept <laughs> us, period. Yeah, no, we yeah. need but this. I, we I just—I I, want to add something. Going off of Rob's earlier notion, before we jump to the vaccine, it's, it's that that Islam really, uh, Islam has an awareness of the of the human nature, the fitrah, and Islam's awareness is that the fitrah is cultivated rather than suppressed. So, um, basically, men and women will kind of incline to different spheres of activity, but this is, of course, uh, something that provokes, you know, screams and howls of protest from liberals. For them, it's a classic case of blasphemy. But I mean, even in the primitive, like biological or uh, utilitarian terms, which are the liberals uh, reference, the case for uh, absolute identity of vocation is highly problematic. Um, I mean, basically, how, however heavily society may brainwash women into seeking absolute parity, it cannot ignore the reality that they actually have babies and have a tendency to enjoy looking after them. I mean, that's why like the, this whole men getting pregnant thing is is wild to me, but I mean, those those that are courageous enough to leave their careers while their children are small, uh, increasingly have to put up with uh, accusations of blasphemy and heresy from society. It seems like, but uh, but they do persist in their belief, which is outrageous to the secular mind. That mothers, uh, how dare they bring up children better than babysitters, and and that breast milk is better than formula milk. How dare and, you push you know, breast milk? You know. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and even this, this is the ultimate heresy is that that bringing up a child can be more satisfying than trading bonds or driving buses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's nuts. But yeah. Yes. Anyways, oh, Rob, go get your vax. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like I said, man, I got I got all my shots. I'm a blind parent and in the States doesn't matter where you're at, but in the United States I'm blind. My wife is blind and we are scrutinized uh to a higher degree than everyone else. So if your kid gets COVID, for example, you know, oh your kid got COVID. My kid gets COVID it's because I'm I'm a negligent parent because I got a disability. So we have to do whatever we had to do to make sure that, you know, we're safe whenever we go out and do our things. Trust me, we just started going out like a couple months ago. So, alhamdulillah. But to each his own, man. You know what I mean? You do yeah, you. I'll make it easy on you, you bro. You feel me? <clears throat> you do you. Just don't um, make me, you know, don't don't try to push. Like, I remember one brother, subhanAllah, one brother, every time I'd see him, he would give me, oh, do you know this? Do you know that about the vaccine? I'm like, yeah, let me ask you a question. How long do you spend time <laughs> researching this? He's like, all day, all night. I'm like, all right, how much better would have your time been if you spent memorizing Quran or learning more about Islam or whatever? I was like, bro, I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to follow what you say, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, subhanAllah. So we're going to go back to the, uh, our, our second topic of the night. Uh, and you can feel free to chime in if you want, Rob. Um, but I want to try sure. to stick, get, get back on topic before uh, Wesley came. Uh, mashallah, that, that was fun. Um, but anyway, so as everyone's talking, everyone's very much aware. Um, you know, and I think EA Dawa probably, I think you had a stream about this. Am I right? Yeah. So I kind of want to, I do want to beat the dead horse back to life. So, um, you know, it's... Uh, Leave it to the Muslim cowboy to beat it. Yeah. If you want to make it more dead, just shoot it up with the vaccine. I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, I was, I was thinking you could call it the Green Dean Redemption instead of the Red oh, Dead yeah. Redemption. The Green Dean Redemption. Just, but I mean, just to close on that point, 
uh, with respect to the vaccine. Uh, I want to compare it with because you're talking about you know the Good leftist enough. politics, um, so that you know the whole trans community and how they're wanting to like push, you know, trans. Uh, conversion my body, therapy. my choice. Well, they're wanting to push that onto children, like yeah. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know if you guys saw John Stewart recently, um, where he compared transgenderism to cancer treatment. Did yeah. he? And yeah, that one. That one was pretty good. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, which is just ridiculous because he's saying, "Oh, look, see, medically." And by the way, there's the so-called medical stats that that we're trying to make the the equivalence of this two was done by those who are biased in the LGBT community. In fact, those who are themselves trans and and so on. Uh, and the sample size is very small. And so he's basically saying, "You would push, basically, not not push without question, but you would." heavily urge uh cancer treatment for those who have cancer because not only is there an advancement advancement taking place in cancer treatment more effectively over time but it's it saves lives right and his argument is that oh when people don't have the choice um to do the so-called conversion even when they are like below the age of 10 uh there's stats showing that they commit suicide because they don't, you know, apparently they don't have a choice. You see, I'm so what I want to do is I want to say like, like how ridiculous that argument actually is, compared to say, the vaccine situation, because multivariable stats have been developed now because we've had roughly say, two years of vaccine data, to show that we've actually saved roughly about twenty million people, uh, potential. 20 million we've saved um, over the period of this year and a half or so of, of vaccines. And that's a recently published study just last month. Um, so I think that figure is good because that goes more in the line of kind of like how we do the cancer treatment. Like we, we, we push it, you know, statistically, it, it's viable, it's, it's good science. It's it's the top of the line. Like the mRNA tech is going to u- be used in influenza vaccines and yeah, all future a- vaccines. mRNA like tech is, is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful advancement. So, I'll give you that. You but know. that's that's the. But then at the same time, how do you accommodate? You know, the so-called like. Like how would you put it? You know, the the the, the, the autonomy. Human, yeah, the autonomy of an individual. You don't want to merge into the way the trans people are treating the, the situation, where they're forcing this unconditional totalitarian esque. Ex- exactly. Yeah. So that, that I also, is, I mean, on, on the other side of that coin, though, there are a plethora of studies showing natural immunity to be uh, superior. Now, I don't know how accurate or hundred percent they on a, are, but only on a select few, which are lucky, lucky to have the uh, immunability growth. As compared to a lot of yeah, obviously if they're if they're immunodeficient, and, yeah. yeah, if they're immunodeficient, they're going to have issues. Obviously, yeah. yeah, I mean that's why we give the elders uh, vaccines, especially for uh, like mm-hmm. uh, recurrent shingles or whatever virus, because it does reoccur later in age, and your immunity is lower when you're older. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but and, and yeah. people with AIDS, like acquired immunodeficiency, they do. Uh, you take special measures to prevent certain diseases because once your T cell count reaches below four hundred. You're pretty much uh, walking the the line of death very closely. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, let's get back to Andrew Tate. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to put that out there that I agree with you guys, and at the same time, no, it's no, a, no, we, we appreciate, it. we appreciate, I appreciate it, it, Rob. You're always you're always Thank welcome you. here as long as we keep it nice and respectful, and um, yeah. So, all right, let's talk about let's talk about the uh, the man of the uh, whatever week weekend. I don't know. Yeah. So. <laughs> What did he say? He said, this is why I'm Muslim. Any Christian who believes in good and understands the battle against evil must convert. So be patient. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. Quran verse chapter 30, verse 60. So I think what, you know, a lot of people have have been mentioning, right, is kind of like what's been going on. Has has he like has he really been because for most of us, like I I I didn't believe that he was serious about uh, ever converting. I thought he was just using the Muslim community because anyone like let's take for example, um, what's his name? He's uh, he believes in um, 
what's that where the Abrahamic religions, you believe all, all of them are Jordan going to Peterson? Earth. No, the other one. He, he like makes a lot of tweets and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Considine, Craig Considine. Sure. And, I've never heard of this guy before in my life. Yeah, well, he's like, got he's, hundreds of thousands of followers now because of like posts he puts about the Prophet Muhammad, mm, right? And, mm. and stuff like this. And, you know, he's still so he's Christian. He's Muslim baiting pretty much. Right? He's Muslim baiting, yeah. right? And what he's been doing it for so long. And then finally last year it came out why he's doing it is because he's also trying to push. Uh, pr that's what it is. Perennialism, right? The idea that it, that it doesn't matter what your religious background is, that mm. you're all going to paradise as long as you just believe in God, right? Which then that means that Lucifer, Satan's going to paradise because he believes in God, too. He just doesn't do what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and that's what I thought this was, was this just like, you know, using Muslims because he says, inshallah here, he, you know, he's, he's using these phrases. Like for example, one of, one of his videos that went crazy viral was that four hour podcast that he did, uh, with that panel of people. I don't even remember the name of it, but it had like two girls and it two was guys called were... uh, fresh and fit. Yes. And, and then the girl asked him, uh, you know, like, so, you know, are you in a relationship? He's like, yes, I'm in multiple serious relationships right now. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, don't you think that's wrong? He's like, no, you know, it's like, this is like for men to do it. And she's like, well, don't you think that, you know, women should be able to do this too? And he goes, stuck for the law, that's haram. <laughs> and that went viral, right? That went like crazy viral. You know, everyone's like, oh my God, he's saying, you know, it's saying that this is haram. And this happened like right after the Dean Show interview that he did with Eddie. No, so the, you start seeing him like using these terms. And so Muslims start thinking, wow, look at him. He's talking about ta'adud, like polygyny. And the, like, the video, the video that I saw that went crazy. And I mean, it was to the point to where my dad watched the video. Okay. My dad who doesn't uh, watch anything. And no, I mean, he's, he's on Facebook, but he's an immigrant Arab. <laughs> you know what I mean? Born in Palestine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. even he showed me this video, and it was a video of Andrew Tate saying that all of the religions are done except for Islam. That's the only religion that, that outlasted. He's like, if you say something bad about Jesus in a Christian country, you know, people will just let you get away with it. But if you try to say something about the prophet of Islam, you won't even make it past the block. That's what Down he was saying, yeah. you know? And he was like, he was like, they, uh, you know, they respect their faith. They don't take crap from anybody. That's what he was saying. That was the thing that I saw... He was like, it's like the best religion is Islam because it's the only one left. That's what he was saying. That was the one that I saw that went crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. I got that. Yeah. Well, that's the one that happened. And that happened before the Dean before show. he went on the Dean show. And that's why when Eddie got him on the Dean show, that's what mm -hmm. they talked about. Um, mm -hmm. And and uh, yeah, because that was that was where he that you're right. That's the fresh and fit one where he was wearing the shirt. He was he always wears the sunglasses, but he was like sitting in the middle of the screen. I know yeah. which one you're talking about. And he talked about how he gives like twenty thousand dollars a month. To, to, the, the, to the Orthodox Church or something. Basically, the Romanian mafia, mafia mm -hmm. because he had so many, you know, he, and that's this is one thing we're going to talk about too, guys, is, you know, like how easy it is going to be on him to, you know, uh, you know, kind of get out of some of the situations he's in because he, he owns brothels. Uh, he owns, Does um, he? yes, he owns like legitimate, like, like hardcore stuff, right? And he's mm -hmm. going to have to find a way to get out of this because obviously it's you know it's haram, and 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 he knew all this before he even converted. Well, so, I mean, let's let's kind of make something clear, right? Like it's haram, and the money is haram. Should he be doing it? No. If he continues doing it, does it take him outside of the fold of Islam, though? Absolutely not. Like, but the thing that I clear, that I right? think is, like, but think about this: pretend like you're the Orthodox Church in Romania. Yeah. You're getting twenty thousand dollars a month from this guy as uh -huh. a you know being able to conduct business fee. What happens when this person starts saying, "I'm not going to pay you anymore"? What is it? What if he just keeps paying it though? Well, I think he wants to move anyway. He's mentioned yeah. uh, multiple times he wants to yeah. move to either Dubai or, or Abu Dhabi uh, one or of those countries. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, okay. I mean, the thing is, is we all have to understand that you know, like he just came to, like he just took his shahad this week, you know. I mean, he's a figure that has a big following, but, you know, like, like we have to take these things into consideration here. You know what I'm saying? Like, people yeah. didn't just, people aren't built like the Sahaba, right? We have to understand that. People aren't built like the Sahaba, and it took them 23 years to learn their religion, right? Yeah. Because that's how long the revelation came down to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It took him 23 years to get the entirety of Islam to his companions. And these are, the, these are the best generation. So who are we compared to them? We're less than the dust underneath their, their sandals. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, what's what's that one hadith <clears throat> where it says something along the lines of uh, there will come a generation after you that will only follow one tenth of what what you do, basically, of the religion, and they will still attain heaven, yeah. i.e. referring to our generation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. It's I mean, we have to we have to take these things into consideration. I don't know if you want to pull it up, Brandon, but um, I've been hearing about some really bad takes from Muslims in regards to this guy taking his shahada. Like, like, wouldn't you say Alhamdulillah, even wouldn't you at the very least say, hey, good for him? You know what I yeah. mean? Good nah, in fact, there's there's people saying that they're leaving Islam because he because he took a shahada. Like, and I, I, don't, I don't understand that at all. Right. Well, I, mean, I say they, I say Alhamdulillah for that because it weeds out the clowns. I mean, the thing is, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> especially us, like like I was born and raised in an Arab, you know, Arab Muslim household, and I'm sure this is with a lot of the Desi community too. Uh, a lot of a lot of us are like cultural Muslims. You know what I'm saying? We just we don't really know the we don't really have firm faith in this. We really don't understand it. Right? Like, I didn't know what the Fatiha meant until I was like 22, 23. You know what I'm saying? 21 years old, something like that. And this is majority of Arab and Desi and, you know, like Turkish society. This is majority of it. It's just part of their culture, right? So whenever you get fed all this garbage from the, you know, from the Wokopolix, right? And uh, you believe in all of it, you believe in all this woke nonsense. And you see this guy that they put down as, you know, public enemy number one, especially the sisters, bro, especially the sisters that are heavy, heavy feminists. Like, bro, like they have no they have no foundation in Islam. Right. They believe all they all they do is listen to uh, the imams that say, oh, let's have a conversation with this group and that group. And, you know, all this nonsense. This is all they listen to if they ever listen to anything. And then they see this guy accepting, accepting Islam and they're like, oh, this isn't, this, this can't be the truth. And they leave it. It's an absolute emotional response based on nothing but emotion. Yeah, no, here, I'm going to put this up for, uh, this is some post on Twitter. Um, this is one sister. Oh my God, I have AT's name muted on Twitter. So I'm so behind. He converted to Islam. Oh bro, what the hell? Please, I need a day to grieve. Like, what? Clown clown <laughs> what the heck <laughs> you know i mean that but that's not as bad as there's there's more i mean there's i'm trying to find it one sister allegedly she's a model okay um and she's like i'm i'm gonna take my talents back to <laughs> buddhism like yeah, okay yeah. wow <laughs> wow uh, yeah like like us as muslims uh, are like oh did you check out that muslim model damn bro <laughs> look at her <laughs> Oh like, my seriously. god, dude! She's going. She's going to Buddhism, bro. My foundations are shaky. Oh god, what is this? <laughs> Here you go. Uh, man, Another I love one. Clowns. It's... She said after that, uh, I know worse people have converted to Islam, but before, but the difference is that those people usually underwent some type of transformation prior to the conversion. Why do you want me to be happy that a predator, Astaghfirullah, became a Muslim? Show me an example, dude. Okay, show me an example. Give I'm no, give okay, you an but example. illegitimacy, illegitimacy. Okay, I, I do want to give some credence to that statement if that's please. okay. No, no, there because, is no credence to that. That's okay. That's, well, that's I'm gonna BS. finish. Give it the form. I don't, I don't do that. Form, no, I don't do that. Snake juice. Give Just let form. me speak. Yeah, good, good. That's yeah. BS woke rhetoric. Period. Okay, you can think that when I'm done talking, but I haven't spoken yet, so you can't judge what I'm about to say. Okay, I'll allow you. Okay, so wait your turn, please. Thank you. No. The problem is, is what she's saying. And I, I said this to my husband myself. Usually when we do Dawa on TikTok or something like this, myself included, there's usually you see like this person is learning. This person is is growing. This person is changing. For example, I had my hijab on before I became Muslim. OK, so there we do typically see some kind of movement. However, with someone like Andrew Tate, who is in the public eye, such a private thing like his relationship with God may not be public. That transformation may not be public. We may not be seeing the sheikhs or whomever he's talking to to learn Islam. So while I understand where the sister's coming from, because like usually we do see some, some sort of transformative process. The issue with Andrew Tate is because of his status, we probably won't see that until after the fact. And we have to like... Believe me, I understand the feelings that, like, this person was predatory, was. 
but you have not given him a chance yet, sisters, to, to transform because of Islam. Give him a chance. Trust that the brothers are going to correct him if he should sin, if he should say something out of the like out of line with Islam. You have to give him the time, the space to to like grow and change and, and build his iman and learn the deen. Like you have to, you absolutely have to do that. And um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to address the comment. And brother, if you need to stop me, that's fine. But someone said predatory is a heavy word. And I think um, that considering saying things like rape victims deserve to be raped is a predatory rhetoric. Okay. That's not like, what he said. Again, again, you're using woke rhetoric and you're misconstruing the facts. That's not what he said. At least. Okay. If can you please show me a source where that's corrected? Please show me the source where that's corrected. What are you talking about? Okay. So he said he source. said that they are also to blame, not just the rapist. If I go outside dressed in a cop uniform, if I go outside dressed in a cop uniform and people mistake me for a cop, is it their fault or my fault? So you're saying that sluts deserve to be raped? Did that I say that? See, again, they are, again they you're misconstruing. Blame. They do you're have using this blame. feminist bullshit and misconstruing yeah. what I'm saying just to just to fit your agenda. No, that's not agenda. what I'm saying. Did uh, I say they deserve it? Hey, hey look, we're all, we're, look, look, let's Thank let's you. have some, yo, know, let's 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 no, show no, some respect fine. to we're each other. No, no, we're just having right? candid. No, no, she's the, she's the homie, bro, from here down. We, we uh, talk I, about this I all the time. I feel you, I feel you, but you know, yeah, this, but, yeah, this is a little bit. Yeah, all right, all right. The, the Muslim believe, man, you know, sometimes I have to censor myself through this damn thing. You know what I mean? My my channel's a little bit different than other channels. I do try to keep it a little bit calmer. You know, I'm I'm the laid back guy. Okay, so I'm gonna let's take it down a notch. And I mean, I'm laid back as hell. I mean, but look, let's let's uh, let's bring to what you call it, right? Let's look. never once did I say or did AT say that they deserve to be raped. He said they also hold the burden because if you're dressing in such a manner that invites someone who is willing to do that crime. Also, the criminal is obviously a criminal. He's not he's not innocent. He's also to blame. But if you're dressing in such a way to invite them then you also hold some of the burden period i mean sorry so it's have you looked have you looked into that movement you, what how, i was can wearing I, can i just ask him a question though on that, that hey we'll go for it yeah we'd like to we'll no, let, no, let medina you finish your point because i want to ask a question are you going to say well say, if somebody wants to do it they don't care who it is they'll go to correct. anyone dressed in any manner correct like, because like, a lot like of women who there's less children for example right there's there's a lot there's actually a whole movement that shows like what I was wearing and most of the the clothes were baggy or children's clothes like sexual assault happens when you're ch like by the yeah by the yeah, time yeah. I, was I don't 18, know about all those statistics I know but... about reality when when a girl okay walks so down my the street, reality who, brother who gets whist hold on Medina Medina who gets whistled who gets whistled who gets cat whistled down the street a girl wearing short shorts or a niqabi or but or, cat or, whistling or cat whistling and rape girl are two wearing, different things uh, bro yeah. Like, like all the all the military that raped women in 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 uh, what's called in Iraq. Okay, now you're talking about military, bro. Obviously, but, it's, <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying <laughs> is, is, is too. It's, it's the thing is, right? Like, look, we Your can we move, can bro. we can talk about rhetoric and stuff like that. In reality, majority of the time, somebody gets raped or something. It's it's a power dynamic. It's not. Yeah. It's not more of a, what you call that. it? That's not, we're not saying anything against like, that. Especially, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, so that doesn't have to do with here the a naked chick or a girl wearing a abaya. Who gets it could whistled, be a girl wearing an abaya depending on who the, who the <laughs> a hole is. Arguing, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I, I there are women, there are women that are fully covered in Pakistan and India that are getting uh, attacked. That's fine. And yes, they are there are. But I'm saying more I'm, likely, just finished, especially finished. here in the West, more likely. But, Let's be real. Now you guys just think we, deny reality. Just arguing for the sake of I'm curious if there's legitimate statistics about this. Where there are women that are fully clothed and compare compare the two. And, and try to justify it. I mean, I, th I think there's got to be some lines in there. Like, is there um, is there legitimate statistics on this? If there is, I'll be very curious to see. You know, because right now we're just talking from... I love denying reality, too. So, <laughs> go ahead, yeah. <laughs> look, bro, it's it's just, like, you know, as, as, you know, as people that... All right, bet. Check it out. So, you know, like, I, yo, I was molested as a child. You know what I'm saying? I was, too. I was molested as a child. I was, too. So 25% of men have experienced some sort of, you know what I mean? Like what, what was I doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
a blind kid. What was I doing, Rob? Tell me. And I know this is an emotional argument. I know that. But what I'm saying is, is let's at the very least look at the statistics. At the very least. And then if you can't, if you say, if you say, well, I can't trust those statistics because the statistics are from this group. I was like, all right, so then what can you trust? Wait, at some point, we got we got to take right. some sort of knowledge. Uh, some right? people in the comments are misconstruing again. No, no, no. I understand what you're happen. saying completely. Well, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm not taking on. what you're saying. I know, One I second, everybody. I never said, One. Yeah, I, I never said it doesn't happen to clothed women. It happens to both. Yeah, but I'm saying it's more likely that a girl who's half naked is more inviting. Period. No, no, no. That's no. Okay, it. so my but my question, the snake juice. I'm again scientifically ant anthropologists would heavily disagree with you on that in the sense that just because a woman is showing more flesh ergo that means she's inviting willfully like for example uh archaeo anthropologists when they look into ancient cultures that practice well before islam by the way when they practice a head covering so in the greco-roman world galen and aristotle and all those those uh so-called scholars, I suppose, um, they thought that a woman's hair, due to some very interesting hypotheses that they were raising, but they thought that the woman's hair was a substitute for what she lacked, and that is male genitalia. Because in the Greco-Roman humoral theory um, system, they believed that a woman was undercooked, so a man was nicely cooked in, in the womb, Whereas a woman was undercooked, she's very porous, so she's very leaky. There's a lot of fluids that that woman's body produces, and she's more or less hairless. They believe that hair function as a form of like a sucking mechanism to suck out the, the fluids. So, so therefore, since the the egg and the fetus and so on originates up here, and since also they believe male sperm originates up here, so that means he her head hair acted as a sort of like a like a sponge to to collect all the reproductive fluids and then that and then you have what's called a wandering womb so that so the womb will then go up collect that and congeal it and then bring it down and that's that's how the belly grows now that's a pretty wild belief but they had their own scientific reasons to believe that now if her hair then acts as a substitute for male genitalia that means uh, this is this is the president for them for for why they are told to cover their head hair. This is why Greco-Roman culture and even Hellenistic Israelite culture practiced that head covering thing even well before Islam. Um, now I'm not saying all cultures believe that theory. I'm giving you as as an example for this. So therefore, in Greco-Roman erotic literature, so for example, a prostitute, the first thing she would do is actually uncover her hair. Uh, to to invite that sexual union. Now, now, why is that the case? Because then the anthropologist will showcase the psychology of that culture based on what that culture is taught. So, in other words, men get turned on. If you are a man, you know, brought up in that culture, you get turned on more because that action of uncovering the hair is sexually enticing. Whereas a lot of other men who are not taught that would not find that to be the case. So it, it comes down to psychological conditioning. So here in, here in Australia, we're like, I, I think you're Australian as well. Like there are plenty of Australian women, white women, a lot of like European women that are happily wearing bikinis and so on on the beach, enjoying the sunbathing and so on. They're not really inviting. And it's part of the culture. They're not just inviting people. Okay, look, I'm bare bodied. Come and rape me. I don't think that's the case whatsoever. Um, so and and, to, yeah. and and a lot of people might not know this as well especially like because they they haven't really gone into fiqh that much but umar and even like many of the fuqaha say that in a muslim a true muslim state the non-muslim women who live there the jews and the christians they're not allowed it's not that they 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 don't whatever because whatever they're not allowed to cover just like a slave woman they're not allowed to wear the hijab right they are it's it's mamnu' for them to wear the hijab and Omar radiallahu anhu during his khilafah he would go around and if they found out that a woman who was a slave or was a Jew or a Christian she would have to take her hijab off 
Like, right? So it, the, the idea of so the hijab... So we don't get them confused, I guess? Or? Yes, because mm -hmm. the hijab is something that is specific for Muslim women only. Right? It is yeah. something that's also an honor. So this, that, this, this, this actually takes away the whole idea that, oh, it's for protecting from these things. Yes, it is protecting men's gazes in a way, but it's not necessarily... We can't use the argument because you go down a slippery slope if you start saying it's to protect from rape. It's, exactly. it's, yeah. it's not, but it is to protect from, agree, you know, seeing things that you shouldn't, but this yeah. is proof right here that this happened, that, you know, it's, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I if I can also, if I, I think can, that if only 0.1% one one is from an intimate, if only 0.1% is from somebody that you don't know, whether intimately or casually, it's pretty safe to say that it's somebody you see on a regular basis where your clothing would not be a factor. And not only that, but if you go back up 30%, and this is by a .org, by the way, statistics. Um, I don't care. I have, I, have many stat, I have many stats showing otherwise, so go ahead, yeah. I don't know why you're so defensive of it. Like, to me, as a woman, that's not, wildly not, concerning. Not. Wildly also, concerning. by the way, Rob, by the way, Rob, even in Europe and America, from 1800s onwards, even er up to early 1900s, the women uh, wore veils and covered up. Uh, I did. I've, yeah, I've seen pictures. Yeah, yeah, and videos too. There's also yeah. one study that shows 54% of women at least partially blame the rape victim for their assaults due to victims dancing, sexually flirting, or wearing provocative attire. There are also what's the percentage? Studies, I'm sorry, I, I missed that. 54% that partially blame the rape the rape victim. So let me ask There's you also something. some studies. Hold on, can I finish? Some yeah. studies have also shown that provocative dress can have an effect on the likelihood of sexual assault, at least in some instances. Again, I'm not saying in all instances, in some sure. instances. Can you cite the source? Of, antecedents of sexual victimization, factors discriminating can... victims from non-victims, Sinovitz, LB, Burn, TJ, AM, Cole Health, January 46th edition, uh, page 151 through 158. And that was, uh, yeah, there's a yeah, but Snake, I, I think. Yeah. I think. Hold on, brother. We Sam. What is up, brother? I saw a lot. So good to have you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Guys, I lead to with Sam. No, no. Guys, for those who didn't know, before he talks, uh, this is who we're gonna have on tonight. So y'all be, be stay tuned. This next week, inshallah, we are finally, Taala, gonna have our episode on why the Quran is authentic and why it is authoritative, and why you should accept it as your book. And revelation from God. So feel free to come join us on that, Rob. It won't be an open panel. It will be just a me and we Sam podcast. But we're gonna have um, a lot of a lot of sources, and it's gonna be mashallah really amazing. So stay tuned. It's tonight time. or tomorrow? No, no, this next week. Tomorrow night is my uh, good, bad, and ugly, uh, which is the Dawah uh, chat, inviting non-Muslims to talk about Hindus, atheists, Christians, whoever, to talk about their beliefs. And we'll talk about Islam. Um, but it's gonna be next week. Inshallah, probably I'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe. Who knows? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Allah on. Whenever we Sam is free and good. So sorry, brothers. On that on that note, um, I'm going over to my channel and Maliki Click. Uh, we're going live uh, very shortly, um, which was a planned stream. So inshallah, we'll see everybody over there. Um, but me and Maliki Click are uh, going live uh, very shortly, so uh, we'll see you all over there. So yeah, assalamu alaikum to everybody, and uh, okay. inshallah, we'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. Again, again, real quick, ca have you. caveat, caveat. The reason I mentioned all that, because, well, yeah. not only does this study and other study go on to infer that provocative dress can lead to an increased chance of date or spousal rape in some situations. And I know it's an unpopular view, but I think it's safe to say that provocative dress may increase the chance of rape in some situations. I'm not saying it always does, but it may increase it sometimes. No, that 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 statement is not a bad. That's that's a fine statement. It's initially, initially, Rob. Initially, initially, you said it's most snake of the juice, time. buddy. But brother Nadir, it's snake juice that you're talking to. Oh, snake juice. Uh, yeah, uh, my bad. I thought his name was. It's okay. Uh, I just uh, wanted you to know. Yeah, cool. S J. So, <laughs> do you mind if I call you, you that? <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, I mind, dude. Come on, please. I'm just kidding. Yeah, go ahead. You can call me whatever. I don't know, man. All right, cool. So check us out, Snake Juice. So <laughs> like initially, initially, whenever we first started talking about this, you said most of the time. I believe that was the initial argument. Sometimes it's acceptable. more likely. I said it's more likely. More likely. To more likely. So yeah. sometimes acceptable. More likely, that's when you're, you know, that's when we're kind of, you know, and you also, and you also cited whenever you mentioned your, um, 
whenever you mentioned your resource, your sources, you mentioned sexual assault. Sexual assault is a wide range, right? Like it doesn't just mean straight up rape. Um, sexual assault could be held. Some people would call catcalling a sexual assault nowadays. So we got to know exactly what the uh, what they define as sexual assault to really see the whole breakdown. But Batakalafik for sharing the the source and the statistics as well. I do yeah, appreciate, appreciate both Thank of you. you. Yeah, and and Absolutely. I don't think any of us are and saying Sister Medina that. Dawa too. Thank you so much. I don't, for and I don't think I don't think anyone here is saying that either side is one hundred percent to blame. I don't believe that Medina is saying that their other side is one hundred percent to blame, and you're saying that women are one hundred percent to blame. I mean, you know, everybody is going to be accountable for their actions, um, you know. Um, but whenever somebody is oppressed, right, they're they're not. You know, they're going to obviously have a easier time in front of a law than the oppressor. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if, if a woman is raped, she is oppressed. Right. And at the end of the day, her oppressor is going to be taken to a task, you know, and, you know, it, it could very well, you know, erase the bad that she had done. Right. She might not be called to question for that because of the oppression that she went through. And this is what we see for a lot of things in Islam, that people might be doing sins, but Allah wipes them out because of the hardships that they went through. Like, for example, there was a... Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people who who had you know done things, and well, let, let's actually go over this. So the whole point of why this is dragging out, people in the comments are saying, let's not let this drag out too much. Uh, we're we're talking about how people are making comments, right? Um, and she's saying she she Noor made the comment, why do you want me to be happy that a predator became a Muslim? Now, what's the issue with that? That's that's really bad um, about that. Is you know, I'll, I'll give you another. Um, screen here real quick. I mean, stuck for the law. Screaming, crying, throwing up. Like <laughs> a guy drinking, you know, a 40. Um, you know, it's just very immature. But what do we have when it came to somebody who was doing even worse than Andrew Tate, right? And and do you, does anybody know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Probably uh Omar ibn al Khattab I mean, radiallahu anhu. If you if you, at, if you if you look at if you look at this, it, it's narrated in, 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 in it in Timothy, right? In He's the, going in to the, literally kill the prophet. He was the, uh, the literally Omar. on his way. <laughs> Omar, as yeah. you see, the Prophet Muhammad asked for two people who were harsh against Islam, right? Before, like for the first five years, this was the sixth year. It took Omar radiallahu an until the sixth year of the Hijra to convert to Islam okay? before Hijrah before Hijrah yeah six year uh, before excuse me six year after the bear after yeah after the bear which is the after the prophet son was given prophethood yes um, so this was you know seven years before before the Hijrah now the prophet son said oh Allah uh, make strong your Islam through either of the two men whichever you love more Umar, there's two Omars. He said the Omarain, right? Omar ibn Khattab and Omar uh, ibn Hisham, which is Abu Jahl. Okay? And so that dua was accepted for Omar ibn Khattab. So he set out from his house and he headed for uh, uh, the uh, bait of uh, Abi ibn Al Abi Al-Qam, right? Who was the house that they would meet in um, in secret. Now it was starting to become more famous, right? So he had set out and headed for the sanctuary where he saw the Prophet Sallam offering prayer and overheard him reciting Surah Al-Haqqa, right? Which is chapter 69, which is the reality. Um, the, the, the words appealed to him and they touched basically his heart. Um, and he noticed when the Prophet Sallam was reciting, it was a very unusual composition, right? And this, this goes, and even in that surah, it says that the Prophet Sallam is not a um, you know, prophet and this and that. And he began to question his people's allegations as regards to, you know, man composed poetry, because this is what, you know, people were, you know, trying to compete with the Quran. They were posting poems. And that's why the Quran came as a linguistic miracle, because, you know, just like when Jesus came, people being doctors and in healing was a very big thing. So Jesus came with miracles to counter that real miracles like Mo Moses, Musa, peace be upon him. When he came, he came with real miracles, not just the illusionary magic that the people of his time was made popular. And so the Prophet Muhammad, what was big at his time? It was poetry. People who were the best linguist on the face of this earth, period, of any time. Like people who had mastered the Arabic language to like genius degree. And he came with something that just completely stunned all of them. And so Omar had heard this one night. And it is where the Prophet in Surah Tahaqqa, that this is verily the word of an honored messenger. Um, it is not the word of a poet, little that you believe. 
right in the in the asbab nuzul which we have which is the reason for revelation omar he mentions in in himself after he converted he told the story he said when i was listening to the prophet saying uh, reciting surah haqqa he's like this this is this the words of a poet and immediately the next verse the prophet was reciting at the kaaba was this is not the words of a poet so this these verses are being revealed to our, to the prophet about omar what he's thinking in his head and then he said well maybe and he and he's he's narrating this he said this, then he must be a soothsayer, like someone who is a, like, you know, people who do fortunes and that kind of stuff. And then Allah sends down the next verse, the Prophet recites, that this is not the word of a soothsayer. Little it is that you remember. This is a revelation sent down from the Lord of Alameen, which everything that exists. And that's sort of the haqqa. So at that very moment, basically that's when Islam had kind of entered into him. But he was still, you know, he, he had this, like, he, he saw that it was separating people you know, between family and brother and this and that. And he was upset about that. He was upset that people were being, you know, d dividing between families. The, the kids, the people who were believing were going to this camp. And so it was causing friction, right? And he didn't want that. And so he actually set out one day to go and had the intention, right? His, he had a temper, okay? And he went to leave his house with his sword in his hand. I heard it was tied around his neck. Chip. Of killing the Prophet ﷺ. He was in a fit of anger and fretting and fuming. Uh, Nu'aim ibn Abdullah, who was a friend of Omar's, he met him on halfway, right, to where the Prophet ﷺ was and where Omar was going. But the Omar was so angry, right, and the fury burst. Uh, Omar said what he was doing. And Nu'aim was a Muslim, right? He was one of those people who was a Muslim. And so, the, so when Omar told him, I'm going to go destroy that man, Muhammad, this apostate from his religion of, of paganism, who has shattered the unity of Quraysh, picked holes in their religion, found folly with their wise men, and blasphemed their gods. See what he's saying? Like it's it's like someone saying, you know, what we would say about Muslims what they're doing to other religions, right? But he's, you know, this was his claim that we're blaspheming their gods. And um, so, what did Nuaim said? Nuaim said, Omar. I am sure that your soul has deceived you. Do you think that Banu Abdul Manaf would let you walk on earth if you slayed Muhammad? Right? Which is the, you know, his other, because he, he was still under protection at this time. And even though the Prophet was doing all this, he was still, he had still had protection from the tribes. And then yeah, he said, why don't, you, too, yeah. why don't you take care of your family first and set them right? And so he got like surprised and shocked because he didn't know that his sister, Fatima, was a Muslim. She was also a, a Muslim who was hiding her Islam. Um, and he said, which folks of my house? Omar asked, uh, your brother-in-law and your sister have apostatized, meaning they have become followers of the Muhammad Sosam. Because he was also not letting it out that he was a Muslim either because he didn't want Omar to kill him. And so Omar directed his footsteps to his sister's house. And as he came near, he heard the voice of uh, Khabbab ibn Arat, who was reading the Quranic chapter, Taha, um, to both of them, which is the 20th chapter of the Quran. Khabab, he perceived the noise of his footsteps and retired to like a closet, like an innermost chamber of the house. And Fatima, Omar's sister, took hold of the leaf because they had things written on leaves, on bones, on this and that, and she hid it. But Omar had already heard the voice. What sound was that that I have heard just now? Shouted uh, Ibn al-Khattab, which was Omar, entering angrily. Both his sister and her husband replied, you heard nothing. Nay, he said, swearing fiercely, Kalla. He said, I've heard that you have apostatized. He plunged forward towards his brother-in-law and beat him severely. So back in the day, the reason he was able to do this is because most of the houses had just flaps for doors. Like you could just walk in. There weren't like wood, there weren't even wooden doors in, in a lot of places. Um, they were just uh, like you know like tent flaps. They were clay and brick and stone houses, but the the, the doors would be you know just flapped. Now um, he came in and he beat him severely. And Fatima rushed to the rescue of her husband. Thereupon Omar fell upon his sister and struck her in her head. Um, and the husband and wife could not contain themselves and cried aloud. They, they let it out, basically. Yes, we're Muslims. We believe on Allah and his messenger. Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what will you do to us? When Omar saw the face of his dear sister, so this is what happened right at this moment. He realized that now he just beat his sister, and she's bleeding, okay? This is worse than what Andrew Tate's doing. This is worse than being a predator. He's going to kill the messenger of God. It's like someone going to go kill Jesus or someone going to kill Moses or any of the prophets. Like, these, this, is, this is truly evil, and he just smacked his sister in the face she's bleeding and what what happens um let me see what you're reading so i may see what muhammad has brought finally he wanted to really take a look at it 
And so Fatima, being satisfied with it, she said, O oh, brother, you're unclean on account of your idolatry. None but the pure may touch it. She was uh, gangster, bro. <laughs> so gangster. Like, she just got beat, and she's like, no, nah, you can't touch yeah. it. You don't need do to go wash it, yourself. <laughs> you, got, you go wash yourself. So he did, and then he took the page, and he read the opening verses of chapter Toha until he finished. Um, and it's basically, verily, I am Allah, la ilaha illa ana. Right, which is the same exact phrase that was said uh, from Allah to Moses, and that's where you actually get the name uh, Yahweh from. It means I like, like I am who I am. And that's what this verse is: is I am Allah, I am who I am. None has the right to be worshipped except for me. So worship me and offer prayers perfectly. Iqam salat for my remembrance. Surah Taha, uh, twenty verse fourteen. So when Omar read this great entrance, he was he was entranced. He said, "How excellent this is." How graceful this is, like literally on the drop of a hat, Iman, which is faith, like true faith, entered into his heart. And he said, guide me to Muhammad. And when he heard that, Khabab came out of Kinsilma and said, Omar, I hope that Allah has answered the prayer of the Prophet Islam. For I heard him say, by Allah, this is the, the, the hadith, strengthen Islam through either Omar bin Khattab or uh, Omar bin Hisham, Abu Jahab. So then, the Prophet, then Omar left the house where Safa was. In Safa, where his sister was, and he went to, uh, to go to the house where the secret meetings were with the companions. And he reached the place with a sword swinging by his arm, and he knocked at the door. And the companions of the prophet turned to see who the intruder was. One of them peeped through a chink in the door and reeled back, exclaiming, oh, It's Omar with his sword. Hamza, who was the big, he was massive, just like Omar. Hamza was like he would be someone like the rock. If you saw Hamza, like think about the rock but you know even more manly like he'll, a big play, beard. he'll play the rock will play him in the new message <laughs> yes, yes with the in nice the 2022 beard. version of the message <laughs> <laughs> yes no hamza if you was, smell anyway <laughs> and even hamza was like you know you know this is crazy because omar was that huge like where even someone huge like hamza would be you know omar was you know a gangster mashallah and so he said dispelling the fears of his friends he said let him in as a friend, he is welcome. As a foe, he will have his, have his head cut off with his own sword. The Prophet ﷺ asked his companions to open the door. So Hamza is saying, like, I'll protect you guys. In came the son of Khattab. The Prophet ﷺ advanced to retrieve the dreadful visitor, caught him by his garment and scabbard. So he grabbed Omar, right? And his sword, he grabbed his shirt and he asked him. He said, why are you here? Why have you come? At that moment, Omar replied to the messenger of Allah, I have come to you in order to believe in Allah and his messenger. And that which he brought from his Lord. Filled with delight, Muhammad Sallallahu with his companions. The, what did they say, guys? What did everybody say? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So the conversion of Omar was a real triumph. And that instant, the effect of his conversion and the situation of the believers who had hereto worshipped Allah in their four walls in secret, now, now assembled and performed the rites of their worship openly in the holy sanctuary itself. This raised their spirits and the dread and uneasiness began to seize the Quraysh. They started becoming fearful because they thought that Wow, if someone is, you know, strong and mighty and, you know, scary as Omar could become a Muslim, then we might have some real problems. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of the point, right? Like, guys, this guy, whatever he may have done, right? And even if we don't accept it, like, even, uh, you know, there's plenty of people that have probably accepted Islam, that have done terrible things to people, right? And Allah will forgive them for the things that they have transgressed against Allah, right? But it's up to the people to forgive them for what they've done to them. There's nothing, they're, they're the people that can forgive that. Yeah. So all we can do is, is say, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided him to the truth. And may Allah guide, keep him guided until he leaves this earth. And may Allah make him I mean, a better person, just like may Allah us. make us all better people. I mean. May Allah That's guide it. everybody who's, you know, still on this, this journey of truth, you know, like many of us were and still are on, right? We're still on That's here it. to get to the closest version of that truth, That's right? We're is. not going to rest until we've, you know, done and extended and uh, exhausted all of our efforts to get as close to our creator as possible, right? Yeah. And, that's, and that's what we invite people to, to be sincere. And, and look, at the end of the day, there's, there's a principle in Islam. It's called wala and bara. So if I have my worst enemy, right, become a Muslim... That moment that they become a Muslim, no matter how much they've hurt me, they could have murdered my mom, okay? Yeah, I don't have to be around him, but wallahi, I will be happy that that person's a Muslim. For her to say, though, that why would you want me to be happy that a predator became Islam? This shows that her iman, like her faith, is actually in question. She has some issues in her iman, to even say that. Big facts. Okay?
Big facts. So, also, so, deserve love for sure. And we're not saying she's yeah. not a Muslim. We're saying that she has to take a look at why would you not be happy that your Lord, according to us, saves somebody from the hellfire. You see what I'm saying? I like, mean, you, it's, I mean, it's it's it's, it's a it's a it's a step of reformation. Like if you if you're saying yeah. straight up, I'm you know, whenever you acknowledge that Islam is the truth, that means you're acknowledging that it, everything, if not most of the things you've done in the past, were wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're Thanks. openly acknowledging that I'm a Muslim now. That means everything I've done in the past was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's an open acknowledgement. So Allahu Alam, man. Allahu Alam. Yeah. We all are constantly on this journey of working on ourselves and trying to be the best Muslims we can be. And um and, you know, it's 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 a struggle. But like I say, he's a new Muslim, bro. You can't you can't expect my man to be uh Sheikh al Islam tomorrow. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. <laughs> and I think I think that's something we gotta put on uh that's something we gotta understand for all converts. You know what I'm saying? Right. So well, and that's kind of like back to what I was saying earlier. And if I could just like leave some last thoughts because we need to go to the masjid to pray. Um, yeah, we're going to close up here pretty soon, too, because I got to go to sleep. It's 2.15, so a.m. Well, uh, OK, um, so I'll be really quick then. Um, when it when it comes back to the, the previous topic, all I want to say is that I don't think so little of men that I don't think that they can control themselves. Um, I think it's derogatory to men to say that they are incapable of controlling themselves no matter what the situation. Um, I, I think it's a to suggest otherwise. Um, <clears throat> next, I did do a stream on this as well on my page, but um, my only concern, and I don't think it's not valid, but it's not something that I'm um, holding against, Brother Andrew. It's just something that I'm nervous about. Um, because of some of the things that he has publicly, you know, said or implied in the past, it does make me a bit anxious that he may try to misinterpret Islam to fit that narrative um, and misrepresent Islam. That's a fear of mine. But more than that, and I trust, I, but I trust in Allah. And so far, he's had what, less than a week as a Muslim? <laughs> two, two days. Right. So like, give him some breathing space alhamdulillah and every time you know like and, and the and, sisters like uh, i know me, I sister, under i'm sorry sister medina real quick uh guys okay. my food's here so i gotta go gotta go get All right. family i so love you for the sake of allah now there's always guys. beautiful um, talk to you listen brandon will link you guys up with me inshallah he's got yeah, all my please. contact we've, info, we've so. posted the link sister joy has posted the link to his right. his, his, his instagram to his yeah. website to his youtube Holla at me, guys. guys. Let's talk check more it out. often. This was excellent. This was excellent. Thank you for everybody for joining Badakalafikum. Brandon, Badakalafik for hosting us. I love you, man. For the sake of Allah, as always. And too, everybody, it's it's yeah. because of Nada that I'm even able to do this amazing work. MashaAllah, Allahumma Barak. May Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alright, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Take care, bro. Assalamu alaikum. So, I mean, I do understand the negative feelings and connotations that sisters may have. Like, we're human. And someone who made us uncomfortable before probably still makes us uncomfortable. <laughs> but the True, fact, of yeah, the yeah. Matter, but the fact of the the fact of the matter is, is that if all of my sins prior to Islam were laid to bear, well, I'd hate to be the subject of a stream like this. I would hate yeah. it. So when I or anyone when I actually at, anybody, right? And so when I look at when I look at Andrew, I think how unfortunate for him that everything he was before Islam was laid to bear. And it's for it's, everyone it's, to judge, for everyone to put evil eye on, for everyone. And I think it behooves us to pray for like prayers of protection for him mm -hmm. to keep evil eye away from his iman. Um, because when I sat and I thought about that, my fear would be he would misrepresent Islam. The opposite side of that coin is that he becomes, inshallah, a voice of true Islam, which is the way that we're supposed to respect and treat our women, right? Like he can take this and turn it to the truth in a way that shows A, his change, and B, the truth of Islam in a very positive way. So I know that there are sisters who are uncomfortable and that's normal, I think, and that's I think that's okay. But I think our iman has to take precedence over that in the sense that while it's uncomfortable, there is nothing that Allah cannot do. 
There's nothing impossible for Allah. And Andrew Tate is not so great that he is outside of Allah's power to change. So Facts. I yeah, think that it, it, take comfort in that, sisters, because uh, with those statistics that I put up on the screen, many of us have been through some kind of sexual assault. And I'll be honest, that conversation is very triggering to hear that someone would indicate that things that happen for 30 percent of us before we're 18 years old that it's partly our fault is wow that's really hard to swallow i mean because nobody else on this panel um has probably been to the gas station and literally sweatpants a hoodie and 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 covered and still been catcalled there are some things that just don't stop people some people just cannot be stopped but I feel as though when we, when we look at this situation, we have to look at it not from our feelings, not from being triggered, not from an emotional point, but from what does Islam say? And Islam says that you have to trust in Allah for the change. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, sister. May Allah bless you. I mean, Allah bless you so much. Yeah, thanks for sharing. All right, but we Sam, I know you did. I kind of you didn't get to talk yet. I'll, I'm gonna let you go. So. We Sam always talks about how much patience I have, but mashallah, he he does uh, many times. So. No, uh, I, I, feel, I feel I bad, man. He came in late. Like, well, it's all good. It's all good. I, I I was I was just gonna listen anyway, but then this topic because we were literally discuss discussing it today. And um, there are actual um, like uh, magnetic resonance studies that show that depending on posture. So the only controversy there is whether it, whether posture or clothing is more um, is more responsible. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, by the way, that's that's also related to uh, the high heels and causing lordosis in the lower back, i.e. the arching of the lower back and the yeah. Oh, well, I, I don't know anything about that. But in terms of like, so th there was an, a bunch of isolated studies where they gave men pictures of scantily clad women. And then they gave them picture, uh, pictures of women who are in like normal posture, wearing a lot of clothing. And they tracked their, you know, their, their neurons or whatever activity was going on in their brain. And it showed that whenever the, the man, like a high percentage, I think it might have been all of them or something like that. But it, it's, it's called How Our Minds Objectify Women. It's on the Scientific American. But depending on uh, which picture is shown, the part of the brain that recognizes a sentient being, like somebody who's capable of um, of interacting, like reciprocating a conversation, shuts off. And the part of the brain that recognizes tools, like hammer or, or wants, like I want this or I want that, that part of the brain is activated. So th these seem to be like kind of like empirical studies that show that uh, that depending on, on the circumstance, of course, everything is different, but uh, clothing and um and posture because hijab is both hijab is clothing and posture and and behavior and all that does uh, definitely does definitely contribute to the um to the issues yeah but by, by the way those those areas that get activated are the primal part of the brain so the amygdala nucleus accumbens etc and those are basically the instincts of the human mammal just like a dog when it gets angry uh you can't really do much to uh stop it from following its instincts so it's very hard to uh, have the higher cognition, the prefrontal cortex, have an inhibitory effect on the primal instincts of man, i.e. hard to turn off that which is instinctually activated. But yeah. Yeah, and I agree with that. But then the objectification studies or, you know, the other objectification studies, like I read the conclusion of the one, the study you just published, the Dress and Sex, a review um it's interesting that in their discussion near the conclusion they're talking about how there's a simultaneity between the way the culture evolves and the more gratification and just say images now in a digital age that for there's sure a direct correlation uh with uh in this case if you perceive it, it could range from movies video games music even just artwork or poems yeah, if a woman or a man, if they dress a certain way, or even now like tattoos are becoming a... Because tattoos is part of an evolutionary context, like certain tattoos and colors and 
it's that stimuli. So again, but rape should not rape fall under the category of power control and abuse, not sexual. Oh, we're not saying it doesn't. We're not saying it doesn't. Yeah, but the the the, the antecedent maybe one can argue is that uh, those areas that are activated, i.e., the primal parts, uh, lead to that action, i.e., rape. So but, one can, but then, but at the end take, of the day, dress. You know, but at the end of the day, whether a person's fully dressed, if, if a person's just showing the face or ninety percent nude, that still should not. That person's autonomy of how the person wants to be, that still should not be the just. Well, yes, yeah, should not. Right. The key word should yeah, not. But, but, but now you're a exiting criminal, the realm of both a criminal will always be a criminal, and that's and you said should not, and yes, I agree with you. It should not, but a man will always be a man. A dog will be a dog, period. There's some things you just can't pull out of uh, <laughs> the human. And and I just also want, want to say one thing with response uh, from an Islamic perspective. Uh, Sister Medina, she said that God that, that God um, holds men to higher standards than to believe that they are incapable of controlling their urges. That's absolutely, I don't think that's true from an Islamic perspective. Uh, Islam is very pragmatic. It recognizes our innate dispositions. It recognizes the things that uh, we we crave, we yearn for, or that we, we desire. And that's why these policies are, that's why separation of the genders exists. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that they are essential for maintaining, you know, peace and the safety of the women. I mean, part of the, the ayah of hijab says, So they won't be harassed, literally. That, that's, that's, that's what it says, so that they won't be harassed. And just anecdotally, uh, you know, how many years I've been in this country, like 24 years, I have never, uh, living in Muslim neighborhoods in New York, living in Muslim neighborhoods in Hamtramck and Dearborn, I have never ever seen actual hijabi. I'm not talking about like, you know, uh, tight clothes, uh, you know, whatever is associated with hijab these days. I've never seen an actual muhajjaba ever catcalled, ever, regardless of where she is. Not a single time. I have seen hijabi like covering their hair, but with like makeup and, and tight clothes and high heels or whatever, showing some skin. I've, I've seen that uh, oftentimes. But just, uh, so there's studies, there's like anecdotes, Quranic ayat. I mean, and it's never to put the blame on the victim. Never. A'udhu billah. Never, never, never. But we're just no, saying earlier, every, uh, uh, everyone should do their part. Be, they're still going to be taken into account as oppressor on the day of judgment. So. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. all I wanted to say. Barak brother. Barak All right. Um, mashallah, guys, everybody. It's been a wonderful three hours and 24 minutes. Um, you know, this is uh, this has been great. We've had amazing people on. Alhamdulillah, too bad we didn't get Maliki Click and John Fontaine on for long. But I think John was having some internet issues. But inshallah, he'll be on tomorrow for the good, the bad, and the ugly, where we will go and have wonderful in-depth conversations with our non-Muslims or not yet Muslim guests um, to talk about why um, Islam is the truth and why they think what they have is the truth, inshallah, in a respectful and uh, deep, hopefully, amik discussion. So we invite all of you to share this and to tell even, you know, uh, your friends about it and anyone else that you know. First of all, I want to ask Allah, ask my creator for forgiveness for anything that I might have said or done that was wrong or harmed or offended anybody for that. It's never my intention. All I'm trying to do is to bring the light that has entered into my life and to my heart and to others and to also give a nice and down home perspective on uh, the way that I see things. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So everybody, I really appreciate all of your time. I thank all of you, all those who have supported me along the way and all of those who have helped me in any way. I want to thank, you know, my parents for everything that they've done for me and, you know, I uh, can't wait to see them the next time I can. So if they ever watch this, you know, I love you, mom and dad. Um, and uh, inshallah, stay tuned for what we've got coming on with uh, Brother We Sam uh, this this week. And tomorrow, you know, I'll have the podcast again, same time, 11 uh, Mecca time. And that is going to be 4 p.m. Uh, Central, 5 p.m. No. 2 p.m. Eight hours behind that time. Well, whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. So, um, everybody, this was great. Uh, it was a blessing to have all you guys. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.